This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. The Python Hyena. And folks, I've been a long-time wrestling fan, you know, and they talk about where women's wrestling have come now with uh, Ronda Rousey in the mix, but you know... I'm very old school, and uh, I love a lot of the women that have paved the way in wrestling, you know? I'm talking about your Wendy Richter, I'm talking about your Velvet McIntyre, and the guest I have on the phone tonight. We all remember her with the pigtails. Yes, we absolutely love her. Folks, I give you the wonderfully talented, beautiful Princess Victoria. How do you do, Princess Victoria? I'm doing fine. How are you? I am doing great. Spent the last uh, few nights just watching your matches. I'm going to tell you, you know, I, I love your matches. I've never seen a bad one. <laughs> we Well, we, back in, our, in my day, uh, it wasn't, we weren't, and I, I don't mean it as an insult, but we were not weekend warriors. Mm-hmm. We wrestled six, seven depending on the week we could wrestle eight times a week you know because they double book us in a day so you know we were continuously honing our skills literally every day okay well you know i know i was in touch with you back uh, a few years ago and in your my my uh my second wrestling related interview and uh, I'm going to get you to share a story with us here to start off, because my first wrestling-related interview involved, uh, I had uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper's son and daughter, Colton Ar- Ariel, on here. And you shared a, a very funny story about that. Please uh, relay that on here. Well, I'm not sure if Ariel knows it or not, but she was her name was almost Chelsea Marie. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, myself, Wendy Richter, uh, Piper, and the Samoans that were all doing a tour in Puerto Rico, and we were sitting uh, beside the pool at the Hilton, and Kitty was pregnant with Ariel, mm-hmm. and Roddy was trying to figure out her name. He knew it was a girl, so we're all sitting around, and somebody came up with Marie, and Piper being Piper, he came up with Chelsea, so her name almost was Chelsea Marie. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that's a funny story. I I've had uh, Ariel on here a couple times. You know, she's into music and she does some acting. You know, um, and uh, very pleasant. I felt so bad when Roddy Piper passed because he was one of my all time favorites. I I think the entire wrestling world mourned that day. Yeah. Piper was. Uh, Piper was one of the best. He was not only a fantastic wrestler, but he was he was a fantastic human being. Um, if if you didn't like Piper, you didn't like anybody. Uh, he was just he was Piper. You know, <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. He just it, 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 when when us girls were on the road, uh, there were certain wrestlers that we could seriously depend on. Mm-hmm. Piper was one, Don Morocco, uh, the Samoans. If us girls came into the area, especially if we flew in, we would need a ride to different towns. Or if we drove in, you know, we'd need to know where the motels were. And those four guys especially, you know, they babysat us. Okay. They made sure we know where the motels were. They made sure that we knew where the best places to eat were. Okay. You know, it was... This is back in the day when wrestling was family. Yes. You know, I I love wrestling back in the day. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I think it was two Christmas ago, uh, my brother and I were sitting down watching uh, Raw or SmackDown Christmas Eve, and we got, I hate, I hate to slam on today's wrestling, but we got through maybe about five minutes of it, and we were like, you know what, this is becoming a soap opera. So we went in the computer room, turned on YouTube, and we watched some wrestling, some of which had you and Velvet McIntyre, you know, and we were just enjoying that. And, uh, you know, I to quote Jim Cornette, I'm like, this was the era I loved wrestling. Well, it, you 
I got very lucky. I broke into the business in that era. Mm-hmm. Um, and and not, not really to slam any other wrestlers, but you're right. It It's become a soap opera, and I don't blame that on the wrestlers. They've got to do what they've got to do to get a paycheck. Mm-hmm. I blame Vince McMahon. Yeah. Um, I distinctly remember a day, and it was back in 1987, and I was up late. And I happened to come across uh, one of the WWE shows. They had went over to Kuwait to entertain the boys Mm -hmm. and girls. And they were talking about Triple H was going to be Santa, and there were three girls, I can't remember their names, that were going to be, they were going to have a contest, and whoever won the contest was going to be Triple H's Santa's helper. Wow. So I'm I'm uh, I'm sitting there watching it. I want uh, so we're gonna have a wrestle off. We're gonna have two girls wrestle, and then the winner of that match wrestles the third girl. I'm interested. I sit down. The girls come out. They've got these short little Santa coats on, which is fine. We all wore our short little coats. Mm-hmm. But when they got in the ring and they took off those coats, I wanted to put my foot through my DLP. Yeah. They had three triangles and butt floss on. And they didn't wrestle. They danced. It was a dance-off. And the only thing missing, in my opinion, was the steel pole. And that was the last day I ever watched WWE. Because that, that degraded my sport to a point that... My son was born in 1992. Mm-hmm. I did not tell him I was a professional wrestler until he was 15 years old so I could explain the difference in what Vinny was doing and what real wrestling was. Yep. Um, like I said, I, I'm not slamming any other wrestlers. They do what they got to do to get a paycheck. But what Vinny's done to my sport, if... I have no respect for the man whatsoever. Yeah, I lost a lot of respect for him, what he did to Bret Hart on the Montreal screw job. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Shawn Michaels blowing his nose on the Canadian flag and, and spitting on it and whatnot. Um, they can call that heat. I thought that was so dis. Motors like Don Owens or Bill Watt would have done if somebody did that in their arena yeah they would have told him don't change your clothes don't take a shower go in that dressing room get your grip and get out of my territory yep i Um, think i think sean michaels i don't care what they say about how great he is i think sean michaels is despicable i've never liked him since well i've never met the man uh, but to blow your nose on somebody's national flag, mm-hmm. uh, what, what, what would we have done if it was the American flag? They would, yeah. Bret Hart had have done that. They would have tried to kill him. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. I, I mean, there, there's certain things you can do. We, you know, the Iron Sheik, um, uh, 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 Fidel Cortez, they had their gimmick. Yep. But you never saw him spit on an American flag. No. You never see it, saw him burn an American flag. And to me, that's way past the point. If you've got to do something like that to get heat, you need to go back and retrain yourself. Yeah. Well, I hear a... Because, du- yeah. Because in my day, all Leilani Kai had to do was walk from the dressing room to the ring Mm -hmm. and just the way she walked she had heat when she got in that ring yep you know Piper was the same yep if you go back in the day in my day you didn't have to do things like like that you just it, it it was not necessary oh his feud with Jimmy Snuka was to me one of the best feuds ever you know Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I got a story about that. Sure. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Snuka 
been wrestling a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I was at my grandma's house for the summer. And my cousin came up, and he took me to my first wrestling match. Jimmy Snooker happened to be in the main event. Mm -hmm. And I fell stark madly in love at nine years old with Jimmy Snooker. <laughs> yeah. I stood there in line after the matches, and I waited while Jimmy Snooker signed everybody's autograph. If there was somebody standing there in the line, he never walked away. And I still have that autographed 8x10 that Jimmy Snooker gave me when I was nine years old. Now, fast forward of 15 years. I'm on a plane going to the west coast of California from New York. And guess who was my, uh, the person sitting next to me? Jimmy Snooker. And I was sitting there like the biggest fan in the world. I couldn't even talk straight. <laughs> and I'd been wrestling for four years at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, back then, yes. And um, uh, the no, the screw job I didn't care for and the, the way that was done didn't care for. But, yeah, back then they didn't have to do that to get heat. You can look at guys like Roddy Piper, look at guys like Ric Flair, even the Iron Sheik. They knew how to get heat with Ohab to resort to stuff like that. I find today it's so demeaning. And going back to Triple H, too, you know, I had this argument with somebody today that, yeah. that uh, they said Triple H paved his way through wrestling. I'm like... I don't know. When you take the China and Stephanie McMahon factor, I, I'm sorry. I gotta back up and say I disagree. <laughs> right. I, I totally agree with you. Um, I'm not taking anything away from him as a wrestler or a persona. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have to marry somebody in order to get over. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And what they. What they did to China, I think, was the beginning of her end. Yeah. I mean, I, and, look, and look at what they did to Wendy Richter. Yeah, I love Wendy Richter. There was a woman right there. I, I watched her do cage matches. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's awesome. Oh, and one, one of the top female wrestlers to ever have been. She... If she was if she was a good guy, the crowd loved her. Mm -hmm. uh, when her and I did a tour, and she was a bad guy in the states, mm -hmm. the crowd roared. Uh, there was one night in Louisiana, and it was Thibodeau, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. There was a mixed tag match between Tommy Rogers, myself, Wendy Richter, and Buddy Landell. Okay. Wendy actually had more heat than Buddy did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, when she did that bicep pose and she got that look on her face, you know, where just total disdain for the fans. Mm -hmm. You know, and a absolute adoration for her own body. They couldn't help but hate her. Yep. But anyway, um... We're doing this mixed tag match, and at the end, Wendy throws me into the ropes, mm -hmm. drops down, I go across her, and Buddy Landell gave me a front forearm to the face. Oh, yes, so, I saw that, yes. Did you, uh, did you see where the crowd rushed the ring? Uh, no, I or didn't did catch they, that. I or, saw you in one where you were tagged with uh, Leaping Lanny Poffo. Oh, and, yep. And it was well, yeah. I tagged with Lanny on the uh, on TV. Okay, so I didn't see. Road, I believe it was Tommy Rogers. Okay, so but I didn't anyway, see the fans rush when, the ring. Yeah. When Buddy hit me, mm -hmm. we were in a concrete building, and my mouth was open just right. And when he hit me, it went pow. And when it went pow, it bounced off of every wall in the building. <laughs> The crowd went dead silent for about two seconds. And I'm laying there. I'm, I'm out. And all of a sudden, that crowd roared, and they got up, and they rushed the ring. 
<laughs> Buddy and Wendy had to go under the ring because there were only two security guards out there. <laughs> and Buddy came back to the dressing room, and it was in Bill Watts territory, hence Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And he, I ain't never doing that again. Bill looked at him and said, oh, yes, you are tomorrow night. <laughs> I was, like I said, I was lucky. I yeah. broke into the business when all of the greats were there. You knew how you to know. sell well, too. Like, I watched you in a match with um, Wendy on singles, and when she bounced your head off the turnbuckle, I just loved how you just dropped back. You sold it well and convincingly, you know? Well, that came that came from Sandy Barr, the man who trained me. Mm -hmm. And Sandy made a really good point. If somebody is choking you, why are your hands up in the air? Why aren't they at your throat trying to pull those hands off your throat? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you get your head knocked into a turnbuckle, why are you still standing? Exactly. He, made, he had us watch the old timers. He also had... Greats like uh, Professor Dale Lewis, uh, Ed Wyskowski, Dutch Savage, Buddy Rose. Mm -hmm. um, you name the wrestler that was in the Pacific Northwest between 78 and 80. Sandy had them come down to the school and work with us at least one day. Yeah. And the reason he did that was he said not, there's not a person in this world, unless they're a cookie cutter, that wrestles exactly the same. No. And you need to be able to adjust mid-bump yeah. in how somebody else works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you sold really, really well, too. That's one thing I noticed. Like, like there's a lot of times where you, got, uh, you were standing and they took you and dove your head into the mat and you just laid there with your arms like kind of frail. You, you really sold the pain, you know? Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. It, it, it was for the fans. Mm hmm You know, uh, it, it, that's what else Sandy told me. Mm hmm Doesn't matter if there's five or 50,000 people in that arena. You give everybody the same match. You know, I, I got to talk about your attire. Number one, I, I, I am tickled by the braids, the pigtails. I love that. Do you have your pigtails today? No, I don't wear <laughs> pigtails anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm 58 years old, and my hair is not quite as thick as it used to be. And pigtails on a 58-year-old woman just, you know, doesn't look right. Well, you know what? I, I always got a kick out of the pigtails, you know? And uh, there was some tag matches you and Velvet were in where you would go... You had some offense, and you would um, somebody reverse you get against the rope, and your oppo the other uh, opponent on the ring apron would grab your pigtail, and you would just flop right under the mat, right on your back. And I was like, those poor pigtails. <laughs> I left more hair on those in those rings than I carried back to the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it, going back to old school, that was old school. Mm-hmm. You know, you used everything you could use. Yeah. And that's and Wendy Richter, Lord have mercy. I bet I bet you she's got enough hair she pulled enough hair out of my head to make a wig. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another match I saw you in too that I found amusing. A lot's been said about the fabulous Moolah. But I watched you in a match with her and I just broke out laughing. I mean, I don't know how it happened. But Moolah ends up on top of the referee, missionary style, and then you get on top of Moolah and the poor ref's frailing arms and legs. Do you remember that? Oh, God, yes. I hated that spot. <laughs> I just broke out laughing. I, I hated, I literally hated that. Every girl that ever had to get in the ring with Moolah, Moolah wanted to roll the referee. Yeah. And... We, nobody wanted to do it. No. 
but she was the boss, so you did what the boss told you to do. Yeah, well, I, I was pretty impressed that Moolah, at 80 years old, took an RKO from Randy Orton. But, yeah, uh, I saw that the other day. Yeah, I was pretty impressed. Ever since, though, the whole, uh, they were going to name a, a, a battle royal after her in WrestleMania, there's been a lot of talk, and I won't get you to gossip or anything like that, but, uh, but what, were you, what was your experience, good or bad, with Moolah that you can share? There were good times and there were bad times. Mm-hmm. You know, the bad times were when I broke my neck in the ring in the first or second week of September 1984. September 1st, and yeah. I, I couldn't wrestle. Mm-hmm. So she sent me over to this guy in Holland, and her comment to me, and I hadn't, this was in, like, December, and I hadn't been able to wrestle since September. Mm-hmm. And when you're not wrestling, you ain't got no money coming in. Yep. And I owed her some rent money, and she made the comment. She says, you know, the nicer you are to this guy, the bigger your paycheck will be. And you could really use a good paycheck right now, Princess. Oh, man. And I, when she put me on the phone with this guy, I told him straight up. I said, separate motel rooms. Mm-hmm. Uh... Literally, the first morning after I got off the plane, um, I woke up, and I guess my instincts took over. And I caught this guy in his boxer shorts in my room. Hang on, I got a plane going over. That's okay, I can hear you. (laughs) I'm five minutes from the airport. Um, I woke up with this guy reaching for my chest. Mm-hmm. Standing there in his boxer shorts. Oh. Well, I've 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 slept behind walls and in doorways when I was a kid, so you kind of get an instinct. And I woke up with his hand in my in my hand, and I had his wrist bent back, and he kept trying to push. And I looked at him. I said, "I'll break your wrist." Mm-hmm. Um, this guy didn't get beat by the ugly stick. He got beat by the whole forest. I mean, yep. and I'm sorry, I've got my standards. Yep. And when I got back and Moolah found out that I hadn't slept with this guy, that's when she decided that it was time for me to pay my back three months' rent. And since I didn't have any cash, she took my yellow sun outfit. Mm-hmm. She, t- she basically took all my wrestling gear for three months' rent. And I left that place with a $20 bill in my pocket and everything I own packed in my Chevy Malibu station wagon. You should have slapped the shit out of her. (laughs) Well, I had a broken neck at the time. Yeah. But that wasn't even the worst of it. When, When I left, when I left there like that, my heart was broken. I don't, I wouldn't. Because wrestling, you know, that was my family. Mm hmm. And I, I, I was just, I was lost. So I disappeared for 30 years. And, you know, and this was just a few months before WrestleMania, too. And it would have been such a delight to have you on that card. I wish I could have been there with Velvet. Um, but when I came back in and I started getting back in touch with people, this, this is the thing that Moolah did that I'll never forgive her for. Okay. She had told the girls, not that I had broken my neck and couldn't wrestle anymore. She had told the girls I was in prison for dealing cocaine. Oh. And if it's a lie, Velvet McIntyre is the one who told me. Mm Mm-hmm. And I've never, I've known Velvet for going on 40 years now. In fact, 41 years, and Velvet has never lied to me. You and Velvet have the Facebook page. That's where I caught, uh, originally reached out to you on, so. Yeah, we do. Velvet and I are still very much friends. We talk bi-weekly, mm-hmm. sometimes daily. Um, but she, she, was really, she was really upset when she found out what really happened. Yes. 
You know, it's interesting because when I originally, I knew, I did not know who you were for a long time. I think you remember a couple of years ago, I was trying to get an interview with Velvet McIntyre. And um, right. yeah, because I, I, first time I saw Velvet McIntyre was the first Survivor Series, 1987. And right. she just blew my mind. I mean, she hit a cross body on somebody and twirled around in circles. And the only yeah. other person I've seen do that is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, you know? And Velvet with the hair and uh, the nice, uh, whether it be pink or leopard or whatever, and she wrestled barefoot, you know? Yep. She she just mesmerized me, you know? And and when I went to reach out and um, you said that, you know, she would, would refused to do the interview, I kind of started looking up you on online, and I was like, wow, like, you impressed me every bit as much as she did. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I'll, I'll take that as a compliment because Velvet Velvet earned her place in wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we were training with Sandy Barr, it wasn't a joke. No. You didn't train one one or two times a week. You trained seven days a week. Yeah. And you trained in the morning two or three hours, and you trained in, in the evening for two or three hours. Yeah. And... Unlike some of these these trainers, these so-called trainers, mm -hmm. Sandy never charged me or Velvet a dime. Oh wow! Uh, in fact, we lived in Sandy Barr's house mm -hmm. while we were training. Uh, now we earned our keep, of course. We worked in his print shop. We broke down the ring. We set up his flea market. Mm -hmm. But our day started. About the time the rooster started crowing, mm -hmm. we'd walk into Sandy's kitchen. He had a glass of fresh squeezed orange juice for both of us. Okay. And then we started stretching, and then we went on a five-mile run. And that was every single day. Oh, wow. <laughs> then, after we got done with our five-mile run and we jumped in his pool to cool off, we had to go put our wrestling gear on because it was now time to train. Mm -hmm. And there were four five-gallon buckets around the ring. Yep. On each side of the ring. It wasn't if you were going to throw up. It was were you going to hit the bucket and which bucket were you going to hit. Okay. Uh, I distinctly remember one day, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Magnum TA, Terry Allen. Mm-hmm. Uh, trained with me in Velvet. Okay. Uh, Buzz Sawyer had brought him up from Virginia, and he was supposedly going to train him. Well, Buzz, Buzz left him high and dry, so Sandy said, come on. And I remember one day we were at the uh, Chautauqua Sports Arena, and it was an old uh, storage building. So it had this great big garage door that an 18-wheeler could come through. And this particular day the, day, the door was open. It was about 75 degrees or so. And I looked over, and, and Terry was on his knees, on one knee, almost in a thinker position. And the light hit it just right, and I could literally see steam coming off of Terry's head. Okay. That's how hard Sandy Barr worked up. Wow. Well, I uh, I know that uh, you and Velvet made a great tag team, and I like the you both had a great look to you too, like you you, you the pigtails, you know, and uh, the way you were done up. And Velvet, what can you say? Velvet had gorgeous hair, you know. It can, oh, she, Velvet was gorgeous head to toe. What are you talking about? She still is. <laughs> she, 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 well, I think you were both gorgeous head to toe, but you know what I'm getting at. You know, you didn't I, look like other wrestlers. Well, the, there was one day, I, and this will tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. This is, like I said, and I use this phrase a lot back in the day. Mm -hmm. We weren't cookie cutters. Nope. You didn't want to be, I didn't want to be like anybody else. And one day I had uh, my first outfit, believe it or not, actually came out of my closet with clothes I already had. Mm -hmm. That white embroidered skirt. 
yep. with the beaded belt buckle and the uh, black leather vest. That came out of my closet. Okay. And uh, uh, one day, Sandy said, I want you to rip your skirt off and twirl it in the air like Piper does. I see you do that, too. <laughs> well, and at that point, I looked at him, I said, look, I don't want to be Roddy Piper. Mm -hmm. I want to be Princess Victoria. He said, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. He said, what I want you to do is I want you to take, I want you to watch every wrestler. And I want you to take a little bit of good out of each one of them. And by the time you're done taking a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one, he said, then you'll have your own personality. Okay. You know, we didn't, we didn't want, we, di we didn't want to look like anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, Velvet, want, Velvet McIntyre, that's her name. Okay. You know, Victoria, that's my name. Mm-hmm. You know, I am Native American. Yep. And what's the easiest thing to do in the world other than be yourself? And I gotta say, and that, yeah. And that's and that's what we did. I also too. I love the war dance you did. I mean, I've seen Tatanka do it, and uh, but nothing against him. He had nothing on you doing it. I loved your war dance that you did. I don't even know where that came from. It just happened one day. And I'd been getting beat up and beat up and beat up. And I was so tired of looking at the mat. Mm -hmm. And when I did my comeback, I grabbed this girl's hair. Mm -hmm. And I did that war dance, dragging her by her hair around the ring. Yeah. And, and the crowd loved it. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh man, I get so you, you, we, we, we see Hulk Hogan Hulk up and shake, or the Ultimate Warrior shake the ropes. But right. this, this is you making your comeback, you know. And I loved, I loved your fancy footstep where when you did it, it was just, it was just great, and it really uh, brought the crowd out. And I always hear the old um, Native War chants in the crowd, you know. Right. <laughs> yep. That that well, let's see. That's that's one thing that I did love is I was in the ring and I was representing the Native American community, mm -hmm. which means I had to be twice as good as I wanted to be. Yep. And that that was something that 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 still to this day means a lot to me. Yes. I loved you know, it when you did the Native American uh, war dance. I, like to me that <laughs> I love that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was, uh, when that when I did that, that means I'd had enough. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it was like, okay, give your soul to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was some great stuff. Now, it was September first, nineteen eighty four, that you had, had the the neck injury, and I actually saw the match where it happened. It's sad. Uh, you and Velvet McIntyre were in a tag match, and there was a double pin. Uh, you hit a cross body off of a uh, turnbuckle on one of your opponents, and, and the other one was coming in to interfere. Velvet hits a sunset flip, nicely done, except her head came down and cracked into your, your head. Am I getting this right? Uh, actually, no. Uh, the the that match, I didn't hurt my neck in that match. That oh, okay. Was a, a TV match. The match that I hurt my neck in was what they call now a dark match. Okay. And what happened was, uh, a young lady picked me up, and she was gonna pile drive me or hang me in the turnbuckle or something, and she tripped and fell and sat on my neck. Oh. And I didn't even know my neck was broken. We continued to wrestle. You know, the girls, we weren't like the guys. We didn't do five and ten minute matches. Yeah. If, if we didn't do 15 minutes, we didn't do it at all. And most of the time, in fact, there's one match on there where there's a 45 minute match between me and Joyce Grable. Okay. Um, but anyway, I was finished wrestling the mat match and I got back to the dressing room. And I sat down to cool off, and I bent over to untie my boots, and it felt like somebody had taken a sword 
and just run it straight down my back inside my spine. Yeah. And I sat back up real quick. I said, okay, what muscle have I pulled this time? Mm -hmm. Because back in our day, it wasn't if you were going to get hurt. It was how bad and when. Yeah. And I sat there for a few minutes and cleared my head. And I don't remember much after that other than I went down to tie my boots, untie my boots. And I screamed so loud that every wrestler in that building came running to the dressing room. Okay. And the next thing I remember, I was on a gurney, and there were red lights, and there were EMTs. And then the next thing I remember after that, there were these two doctors, and they were talking to me. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, you'll never lift 20 pounds again. Your neck's broke. You need an operation. And I didn't have health insurance. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any money. And I never got the operation. Uh -huh. And I never stepped foot in the ring again. Yeah, we hear a lot about... Uh, I don't know what Vince's issue is, but wrestlers wanting to form a union so that... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know Jesse the Body Ventura uh, was one that spoke up. I think he he had said numerous times online and in interviews that Hulk Hogan uh, had uh, sold him out on that to Vince. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yep. Yep. I, I'm not. I'm not a Hulk Hogan fan. I'm not particularly too keen on him either. He he was in a he he was uh, doing a talk at one of these conventions I saw online and. Uh, he was asked if he could go back in time, who would he want to wrestle that he never wrestled? And he had made the statement he'd like to go back and um, and uh, teach Bruno San Martino a lesson or two about things he said. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to teach Bruno what? <laughs> He's not half the right. champion Bruno is. Dude, learn how to throw a real drop kick before you start t telling Bruno how to do anything. Yep. Um, Terry Hogan... Mm -hmm. actually had us up here in the Pacific Northwest Yeah. before he was Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. And I knew him. I knew Terry. Yeah. I didn't know who this Hulk Hogan guy was, but I knew Terry. This was before the right. whole sex tape thing. <laughs> Absolutely correct. And uh, I'm, in, I'm, in, uh, I'm in MSG, Madison Square Garden, mm -hmm. and here comes Hulk. Actually, here comes Terry, because he's Terry to me. Mm -hmm. And I waved up my hand, hey, Terry, how you doing? And that prima donna walked by me like he didn't know who the hell I was. Wow. And, and he got about 20 foot away, and I, hell flew up in me, and I turned around, and I looked at him, I said, prima donna much? <laughs> and Piper happened to be standing there, and he had to sit down, he was laughing so hard. <laughs> You, know, you can't let your gimmick be your life. Nope. You know, um, some of these guys, and we call them prima donnas for a reason, mm -hmm. they forget that if it wasn't for fans like you, yep. and, and, and those fans that pay that ticket to be at that arena, nobody would even know who the heck you were. Yep. You know, the fans are who makes the business. Yep. What was your impression of Bruno San Martino? I only met him once, but I had been a fan long before I got into wrestling. Yep. Um, he was a very nice gentleman. Yep. Very, very nice man. Mm -hmm. um, once again, back in my day, overall, 95 to 99% of the guys, some of the best friends and family you could ever want. Mm -hmm. There was that 1%. Um, Bruno San Martino, he, he, like I said, the guys went, especially when we were in New York, yep. those girls didn't know where to stay or where to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, if it hadn't been for the guys helping us out, mm -hmm. we'd have been lost. Yeah. Yeah. 
What was your impression of Jesse Ventura? Oh, I got a story about Jesse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jesse. Yeah. Jesse Ventura, bless his heart, when he got into politics, the only thing I could say is watch out, brother. <laughs> yeah. Because Jesse's heart is as big as the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't, he wasn't ready for the cutthroat crap in politics. Yeah. He couldn't, you know, you know how sometimes somebody does something that's really wrong and you just, you know, you go, how could they? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that was Jesse on anything that somebody did wrong. Because it wasn't in his mind. It wasn't in his soul. The man, I swear to God, the man would cross the street cross the street rather than step on an ant. Yeah. And one day, me and Wendy and Jesse went to Gold's Gold's uh, uh, gym. Mm-hmm. And we're walking back to the hotel, and we were talking about Piper, because Jesse and Piper were friends, and Piper and my, me were friends. And I was telling Jesse about uh, uh, an interview that Piper had done in uh, the Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. And I started rambling on, and he stopped right in the middle of the crosswalk. He said, girl, you do Piper better than Piper does Piper. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, he was a very, very nice man. He is a very nice man. I like Jesse, yeah. <laughs> I, I loved it when he became a heel commentator. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've caught a couple of those. Since I've been back in the circuit, I, I don't, I don't like I said, I'm, I'm not impressed by the WWE. I try to stay away from giving Vince any of my money. Yeah. But I will watch the YouTube video. <laughs> well, here's the thing with Vince. He, you know, uh, he saw Hulk Hogan as what a wrestler should be. But, and here's the problem. You look at WrestleMania three, for example. To me, they've mm-hmm. never topped it. I love WrestleMania three. And the biggest, as far as I'm concerned, the, one of the greatest matches I ever seen was Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Randy Macho Man Savage. And I'm sorry. Yeah. And I'm like, Vince, you're not going to get that out of uh, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. I'm sorry. You're not. <laughs> no, because you got two muscle-bound geeks in the ring. Yep. They can't, they can't fly. Nope. You know, and nobody could do a comeback like Ricky. No. Steamboat was great. Uh-huh. I mean, the look he'd get on his face when he'd had enough, it was like, uh, you, Rick, here, Ricky's, you tell him Ricky's coming and I'm bringing hell with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, now, then, see, back in, once again, back in my day, I told you I was going to say that a lot. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> back in my day, you had people like Killer Tim Brooks. Mm-hmm. Uh, awesome wrestler. Yep. I love to hate that man. Mm-hmm. When I when I when I was sitting ringside, I wanted to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you know you got Killer Tim Brooks, you got the Sheep Herders, uh, Luke and Butch. Yeah. Uh, then you got Dutch Savage. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you got uh, Jay Youngblood. Then you got Roddy Piper. Mm-hmm. Then you got Big Ed Wiskowski. Yep. If you look at put the pictures of those people side by side, mm-hmm. your average man could have a dream, or woman. Yep. Could have a dream because with the different body styles, you could have a chance to get in that ring. Yep. If you worked hard enough, no matter whether you were five foot four and two hundred pounds, or six foot two and two hundred and fifty pounds, mm-hmm. you had a shot of getting in the ring. Yep. With what Vinny has done and the standard that he has raised, you know, I blame him for Eddie Guerrero's death. Eddie was gr- Eddie was I great. I blame him because of the steroids. Yeah. You know, these guys, I, I knew Eddie. Eddie was great, you yes. Know, I watched Hector and, and, and uh, uh, what, who, what, I believe it was Eddie, when they were kids in the Pacific Northwest, mm-hmm. and... We had to run them out of the ring after the matches were over to break down the ring because those kids were in there taking bumps and 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 they were I think ten or twelve years old at the time. Yeah. 
Um, but Benny had set the bar so high that the only thing you could do in order to make that mark was do steroids. And they always talk about Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. I hate to. I hate to have to break Vince's bubble, but uh, Harley Race slammed Andre long before Hogan did. And straight he did. And he didn't have the steroids. Nope. Nope. So, uh, the entire time that I was in the business, I only knew one person that did steroids, and I'm just gonna not even mention their name. Okay, that's all right. Uh, but, uh, have you ever heard the term roid raid? Yes, that's what they use on Chris Benoit. This was roid raid 24-7. Mm-hmm. This guy was a total and complete jerk. Yeah. 24-7, 365. Mm-hmm. He, he would go off in a second over nothing. Yeah. And... You know, then there was another, there was a woman that was wrestling. And I'm not going to mention her name. That's all right. Away. She, she was on steroids. Mm hmm. And continuously, the same exact thing as this guy. Yeah. Would, you know, a fly would land on her arm and she'd just go ballistic. There were, steroids was not was not the given when I was in the business. And if you look at the guys when I was in the business, mm -hmm. you know, I remember Vinny McMahon mm -hmm. when he was a pencil neck geek. Yeah. Running around behind Roddy Piper and Hulk Hogan. Yep. And his arm was probably as big as my uh, uh, forearm. I mean, his neck was probably as big as my forearm. You know, uh, Vin that's like Vinny and Stephanie getting up before. Oh, now, now you got me on my soapbox. That's okay. Go, go right ahead. Vinny and Stephanie testified before Congress mm -hmm. that they'd never seen a wrestler get a career-ending or life-altering in injury in the ring. What do they call let's Owen say, Hart? Let's, let's, just, let's just start with me. Yep. Owen Hart? Yep. You know, uh, keep going. Uh, Chris Bonet. No, I'm not, I'm not going to put him over. But the man was sick. Yep. And then you add steroids to it. Mm-hmm. The man was manic depressive. Yep. And he was bipolar. And he was probably borderline personality. Yep. In my day, if somebody like that came into the area, they either had to go get help or they had to go away. Yep. You didn't keep pumping them full of steroids. You didn't keep putting them on that roller coaster. No. You know, that's another one. I, I, I blame Vinny. Yep. You know, there's a lot of wrestlers that are dead today. Uh, this WWE lawsuit, which I'm part of. Yes. We started out with 62 wrestlers. In the last three years, 10 of those wrestlers, now out of 62, 10 of those wrestlers have died. Wow. Now, if you think about the portion, the percentage, and yet Vinny and Stephanie have never seen a career ending uh, injury or a life altering injury. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I, I had to say, I have to say, I cheered when Bret Hart punched him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you did you see the one with uh, uh, Piper and uh, what's his name? Uh, oh shoot, the guy behind uh, Owen's injury or, or death. Oh, that oh Vince Russo. That's it. Yeah, I don't like him either. Have you seen the interview where Piper is up in Russo's face? Yep, right in the ring. And, yeah, and it, that was not scripted. Yeah, Russo trying to act all tough. I think you know the uh, the uh, the hatred between Jim Cornette and Vince Russo. Uh, well, being diametrically opposite, I can imagine that Jimmy does not like him at all. Uh, Jim Cornette has said 
that he, even if he's uh, in a wheelchair, he said that if uh, Vince Russo dies before him, he wants his wife to wheel him down there to piss on his grave. Uh, yeah, I, I, and for Jimmy Cornette to say that mm-hmm. about somebody, yep. Jimmy doesn't hate anybody. Jimmy, Jimmy is another one of the guys. He, the mouth of the south. He, he was, he just, he doesn't hate anybody except Vince Russo. Uh, you, you, I think you're referring to Jimmy Hart as the mouth of the south. Yes, but I meant Jimmy Cornette. Jim Cornette, yeah. But yeah, Jim Cornette, um, again, he shares my opinion on Shawn Michaels. He shares my opinion on uh, Triple H. And he does not like the cartoon that uh, Vince Russo's made out of the wrestling. Uh, Some of his shoots on Vince Russo are entertaining as hell. I might have to go on YouTube and find some of those. You know what? On um, Facebook, I will send you a link to one of his rants on Vince Russo. I've listened to it countless times just because of the stuff that he, the phrases he comes up with are priceless. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I know you worked with uh, Jim Cornette way back in the Mid-South days, and uh, I think, it w- I remember watching this, uh, Wendy Richter had uh, beaten you, and uh, Jim Cornette gave her a, a trophy, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan had the 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 pleasure of kissing her. <laughs> you remember that? Oh Lord! <laughs> I told you I watched a lot of your matches. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I think I think that's when the phrase "the only good Indian is a dead Indian" was coined. Yeah. I think that's when Wendy came up with that. <laughs> yep. But uh, what was it like working with Jim Cornette back then? He was the same thing as it would be today. Mm -hmm. He is going to put you over by tearing you down. Yeah. You know, and and a lot of the guys, they they don't want to work with a woman. You know, um... But Jimmy and the, and the guys like Jim Duggan back in the day, they did everything they could to make sure us girls were up front. Yeah. You know, they were willing to do whatever it took. You know, and, and that goes all the way back to the start of my career when uh, Buddy Rose and Rick Oliver uh, uh, allowed me, and, and it was up to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was initially up to the promoter, but if they decided they didn't want it, I was in an eight-man over-the-top battle royal. Yeah. And I was the last person in besides Buddy Rhodes. Mm-hmm. And for that to happen, you know, that should tell you how much the guys did to put us girls over from the start. Yes. Yeah, but you, you also could back it up. You had a lot of skill. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you got to understand, too... I got my first apartment when I was 14. Mm-hmm. You know, I've pretty much been on my own most of my life. Mm-hmm. And when you're on your own start at a young age, you've got to be able to back yourself up. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a lot of times the only person you got backing you up is you. Yeah. So, 1984, you had your injury, and of course... Um, of course, the following year, WrestleMania. I feel bad that you didn't get to be part of that. Velvet McIntyre was in WrestleMania too, and I, I hate the fact that the match with her and Moolah was so quick because uh, you right. never really get to see in a WrestleMania what Velvet can do. And I, frankly, if it was up to me, I don't care what Moolah says, I, I would have put Velvet over Moolah and put the belt on McIntyre. But Well... <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, that was... Moolah had some kind of a stranglehold over the McMahon uh, wrestling territory. Yeah. Because they didn't do anything Moolah didn't want them to do. Yeah. You know, um, they say Moolah's had the belt for 28 years and never dropped it. Well, that's not the truth. No. 
velvet actually, and I've got a picture on our website mm -hmm. of velvet with the belt. And she took it from Moolah in Australia. I actually read that, yes, absolutely. Uh, Sutex Green in Texas, and I'm not sure what year it was. You'll have to ask Tex about it. Mm -hmm. She, and I mean she, took the belt from Moolah. Mm -hmm. Moolah came in the ring and slapped her and made her ears ring. And Tex has told me this story a dozen times. She said, and I took a step back put my elbow on the rope, and I looked at her, and I said, so this is the way you want it, huh? <laughs> and if you know anything about Sutex Green, she was trained by Danny Hodge. Okay. The Sue, you don't, you don't, Sue has had, I don't know how many knee replacements, how many injuries. To this day, you don't mess with Tex. No. And she took Moolah's belt. Mm -hmm. And she didn't. She didn't pin her. She made her say, "I quit." Yep. And Vince McMahon Sr. had to buy the belt back from Tex because Tex refused to get it, to give it back to Mula in the ring. Yep. Yep. So, you know, and and see that that's. Don't get me wrong. I feel like I'm really ragging on Moo. She had her good side. You know, there were, she, she took care of a lot of people. Yeah. The other side of the coin, there was a lot of people she did dirty. Mm hmm Um, but she's one, she was one hell of a wrestler. Yes. And all this stuff you mentioned earlier about them taking her name off Battle Royal. Mm hmm As much as I would slap Moolah if I walked up and seen her today, that was wrong. Okay. Lillian Ellison Moolah earned her place in wrestling history. Yes. No matter what type of person she was, without her, there's a lot of us who wouldn't have made it. Yeah, that's a, that's a point, yep. And she paid her dues. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and, and I'm, I'm very much against them trying to erase her from women's wrestling history. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not right. Well, you know, they try. Uh, yep. If if they're going to take her out of women's wrestling because of her person, who who she was as a person, mm -hmm. uh, then they better get rid of. Uh, uh, oh shoot, what's his name? Dang it! What's that? The the uh, baseball uh, Babe Ruth. Okay. They need to get rid of him out of baseball history. Okay. Michael Vick. They need to get rid of him mm -hmm. out of football history. Any of these major sports uh, personalities that you've seen that have went to jail for beating their wife or mm -hmm. doing drugs, if they're going to take Moolah out, they need to take all of them out. Well, it's like I said, Moolah took an RKO at 80 years old. I was quite impressed with that, you know, so she definitely was tough. Yes, she was. Yep. Yes, she was. And she, and she's part of our history. Yep. And, of course, so was Wendy Richter. And I mentioned she had done cage matches. Have you and Velva ever done a cage match? No, we have not. We we never did a ladder match or a cage match. I know Velvet did a strap match against a woman named Iron Maiden. Ooh, no, 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 thank you. Ouch. Yeah, like I've I've seen a picture of Velvet with a, a strap at her at her wrist, and I'm like, th th I know those things are supposed to. <laughs> I heard stories about those things hurting. So, <laughs> Velvet uh, must have been a tough cookie to get involved in one of those matches. Oh yes, sir. She 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 is and she was. Mm hmm. Um, Vel Velvet. I don't know how, but Velvet and I never had an argument. And I'm not sure if it was just Velvet was that good of a person or I was smart enough not to make her mad. Okay. <laughs> uh, Velvet, Velvet, like I said, I trained with Velvet. Mm-hmm. And she, she's a tough cookie. 
Well, they talk about making great music. You and Velvet made great wrestling. Like, just watching you two, whether she's in the ring or you're in the ring, I'm entertained. You two were just electrifying. Well, thank you very much. Um, once again, i got to give the credit back to Sandy Barr. Yep, well, you know? he trained you too well. Well, he, Sandy didn't ask for any money. Mm-hmm. And he was not going to let us go to our first match until he thought we were ready. Okay. And because of that, I'm standing on two feet today instead of six foot under or in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. If it had not been for the way Sandy trained me and the way that he insisted I keep my body in top-notch condition, yep. um, I don't know if you know what a Harvard bridge is. Uh, oh. Basically, you lay down on the floor. Mm -hmm. You you put your feet up against your rear end. Okay. Put your hands on your belly. Mm -hmm. And then you use your neck muscles and your head to roll up into a reverse bridge. Oh, okay. He insisted on three sets of twenty of those a day. Oh gee, I'd never and been able to do it. <laughs> Well, that carried through with me in all of my wrestling. Mm -hmm. I, I continued to do those bridges every chance that I got. In motel yep. room, ring, whatever. Mm -hmm. If my neck had not been in the shape, my neck muscles had not been in the shape that they were, mm -hmm. when I broke my neck, I very well could have died in that ring or could have been in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Yes. Well, Wendy, we mentioned I'd done cage matches, and of course... Uh, you and you and um, Wendy had some great matches together, and of course, you she was uh, a, a lot um, bigger than you were in terms of uh, um, not bigger in terms like uh, she was she was more muscular. Muscular, that's what I'm looking for. And uh, it was the first time I seen her as a heel. She played a great heel. I knew her as a good guy, but right. What was it like being in the ring with Wendy? Oh, boy, what a dance. Yeah. Uh, we, being in the ring with Wendy was like being in the ring with Velvet. Yes. It, it was It was automatic. Mm-hmm. You know, you didn't know what was happening next. Mm-hmm. You just went with it. And she was a good partner. She protected the people she was in the ring with. Yes. Um, and w Wendy used to, a lot of people don't know this. But I was on the road with Wendy for nine months one time. Yep. We, ne we never saw home for nine months. Okay. And every day, if there was a gym with it, when 20 miles, mm -hmm. every single day that girl was in that gym working out. Mm-hmm. And she didn't play. Yep. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you bench pressed 200 pounds. Well, mm -hmm. try doing it 10 times in a row. What did you think about the screw job on Wendy? Uh, don't even get me started. You know, a lot of people, and this is one thing people have said, they said, how could you not tell it was Mula when you've wrestled Mula so much? You know, and I hear that argument, but uh, what, what was your take on this? Because I know somebody else was a spider lady before Mula put the mask on. That was Glendine. Mm-hmm. That was Glendine Browning. Okay. And uh, uh, when in if you watch uh, Dark Side of the Ring, their season finale. Mm-hmm. Wendy will tell the story about that on that show. Okay. She she said she walked into the arena and she knew she was wrestling Spider Lady Glendine. Okay. But Mula was there. Mm-hmm. And she asked Mula, you know what's going on? Oh, I'm just up here doing some doing some work, setting up some uh, some days for all you gals. Okay. Um, and when, and she, she says, if I'm not mistaken, that she knew it wasn't Glenn Dean because the person was too short. Mm hmm But it never entered her mind that it would be Mula. Okay. It never entered her mind that they would do that fast count that they did on her. Yeah. If you watch that match, her shoulders were not down. Yeah, I've seen the match. Have you ever seen a referee count that quick? Nope. It's just like uh, the whole screw job of Bret Hart. Bret Hart did not submit. 
Right. Exactly. Yep. But Wendy had gotten to a point, you know, with the cartoons, with Cindy Lauper and all that. Mm-hmm. He was becoming bigger than Hogan. Yeah. And that had to stop. Because God forbid somebody got bigger than Hogan. Well, they've said that Hulk Hogan has uh, prevented a lot of people from getting the belt. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts apparently dropped him with a DDT. And because people cheered for Jake, that, that, that feud had to stop. Hogan didn't want to put Jake over, and Jake was a phenomenal wrestler. Uh, Mr. Perfect yeah. Kurt Henning was supposed to win a Royal Rumble, but apparently um, Hogan couldn't have that. Yeah. And, of course, we know yeah. Bret Hart at uh, WrestleMania 9. Bret Hart loses to Yokozuna, and Hogan comes in there and beats Yokozuna in seconds after Yokozuna had wrestled Hart, which is ridiculous. But, of course, Bret held Hogan to it that to do the job for him. Hogan said that Brett was out of his league. Can you believe that? You know, Brett Hart is one of my very, very close brothers. Yep. Um and I I know Terry Hogan. And I'm sorry, but Brett Hart is ten, twenty, thirty times the wrestler that Terry Hogan ever was. So was Bob Backlund. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, God, I loved Howdy Doody. <laughs> well, again, Bob Backlund was not one of the steroid users. Vince, I guess, wanted the belt off Backlund, so he, he used the Sheik as kind of an in-between there. And, of course, don't get the Sheik started on Hogan. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you don't want to hear all those cuss words. I <laughs> love the Sheik. I, get it, I love the Iron Sheik. <laughs> I do, too. But Hogan... No, it's, it's funny, you, when I was in wrestling, the Iron Sheik didn't believe women should be in wrestling. <laughs> so he kind of snubbed us for a while. Yeah. And until he saw us wrestle, until he finally stepped out of the dressing room one day and saw us wrestle. Mm-hmm. And everything changed with him from that day. And, of course, there's a whole story about Hogan and, of course, Randy Savage and Elizabeth relationship, too. Yeah, which, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. That, see, that's when they were starting to get into all this soap opera crap. Yep. And that's not wrestling. If you want to watch a soap opera, turn on your TV between 12 and 3, Monday through Friday. Yeah, and Savage was a much better wrestler than Hogan as well. And a much better interview. The old jeepers, he was great. What did you think of Elizabeth? Um, I never actually, you know, sat down and talked with her uh, because Randy's star kind of went one way and my star went the other way. Um, we were very seldom in the same town together. Well, what I found uh, interesting with the what I found interesting with Elizabeth is that Randy would it wouldn't matter whether he was a heel or a face. Elizabeth was kind of neutral, you know, she was just so likable, and yet Randy was such a huge star. He was able to get over without, because sometimes you get a beautiful woman outside the ring, they get the attention that the person inside kind of goes down. But Savage, right. it was a different way. Well, no, they were a team. Mm-hmm. You know, you didn't have Randy without Miss Elizabeth. No. You didn't have Miss Elizabeth without Randy. No. You know, those two were one half of a whole. Mm-hmm. And... You know, you like I said, you just you didn't have one without the other. No. Because they played off of each other. Yeah. You you couldn't put anybody else in Miss Elizabeth's place. No. And you couldn't put anybody else in Randy's place. Apparently Elizabeth was not up for the idea when Eric Bishop was trying to get her to wrestle. I know she wasn't too keen on that and they tried to do that no. to her, yeah. Well, she's a very smart woman. <laughs> yeah, but um, but no. Uh, back in the, back in the day, you had again. Today, you don't have what you call managers either. You know, not like they did. Uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, uh, Classy Freddie Blassie, Captain Lou Abano. You had a lot of great uh, managers back then. Um, any stories about any of them? Oh, Classy Freddie Blassie. Let's see. <laughs> I believe it was Arnold Scoland and. 
Freddie Blassie took me to a bar. Okay. Yeah. Um, there had been an incident at one of the arenas that uh, us girls, our dressing room, got robbed. Okay. And I was head woman on the road. I was the one who collected the money, I, all of that. Mm-hmm. Well, I had told the security guard, I said, you do not come out and watch our match. You stay in this room. You stay outside this door. Okay. You know, because all our valuables, our wallets and everything else was in that room. Mm-hmm. Um, we came back, and the only thing that they didn't find was my jewelry, and that's because I had put it in the toe of one of my shoes. They stole well over $1,000 out of my wallet alone. Who stole and, it? And I went, I went off. Okay. I went off. I said, you go get that security guard. I want the promoter, the security guard. I want him here, and I want him now. Uh, well, I go, they, the, the, the promoter summons me. And this was at the uh, uh, Boys Club of America under the George Washington Bridge in, in uh, New York. And uh, I start telling him what happens, and his little bluesy steps up and says, number one, I don't believe you had $1,000 on you. Whoa. Number two, I don't believe anybody took your money. And I didn't realize that Morocco and Piper had stepped in behind me. And I kind of got a little angry, and I said, look, lady, and I'm taking steps forward. And I said, number one, you're calling me a liar. Number one, you're call two, you're calling me a thief. And as I went to take the third step forward, Don and Piper grabbed one, each one of them grabbed one arm. Okay. And they said, no, Vicky, no, Vicky, no, Vicky. <laughs> I said, oh, hell yes. <laughs> well, Freddie Blasty and Arnold, of course, Piper and Morocco went up and told, uh, told everybody what was going on. And Arnold and Freddie Blasty took me out to have a conversation with me at this bar. And this bar was not open to the general public. Okay. There were only Italians in there. Okay. Need I say more? <laughs> okay. And they proceeded to explain to me that this promoter that I was getting ready to uh, whoop mm -hmm. was part of the people that were in this bar. <laughs> and Freddie goes, Princess, you're too pretty to end up dead. <laughs> <laughs> but they sat there with me for about an hour and explained to me. You know, just, just, just what I had almost gotten myself into. <laughs> well, uh, when WrestleMania 1 came up, of course, uh, the main event, of course, was uh, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T against Rowdy Roddy Piper and Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff. I'm going to say I resent the fact that Jimmy Snuka and Cowboy Bob Orton were outside the ring. I'm like, they should have either put those two in a match together or make this a six-man tag. And again, I've heard stories about Snuka being sidelined because of his popularity, uh, Hulk Hogan. Uh, don't know for a fact. I can only assume. Yep. And I don't like to do that, but uh, Jimmy's been over for 40 years. Yep. You know, Jimmy was one of the greatest wrestlers we've ever had. Mm-hmm. Well, Who that else could fly like a bat like Jimmy Snuka? And off a steel cage. <laughs> oh God. And and when and when he jumped, his arms spread out like he was flying like an eagle. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 everybody loved Jimmy. You know, uh, like I told you earlier, he'd stand there and he'd sign autographs until the last person was gone. Yeah. Well Russell um, and and if if that would if Hogan was part of that, I don't know for yeah. sure. I'm just taking a guess. It's been said. Oh, uh, I I don't know. I wasn't there, so I don't know. I can't say. I just hope that that's not true. Well, I know one thing. Like like Snuka is zero and uh, uh, zero and three WrestleMania, which I think is ridiculous. But You're uh, absolutely correct. 
I mean, I get him losing to The Undertaker. I get it. But that's right. Yep, I get it. But um, Snuka was a lot better than what that track record looks like. But nonetheless, they had brought in Mr. T. And and uh, what do you think about them bringing celebrities into Russell? You know, every once in a while, a celebrity will pop up. I don't have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. What I do have a problem with, and why I'll never, ever accept, even if I was offered, which they won't, they know better, Mm -hmm. to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Yep. To induct a celebrity Mm -hmm. who's never taken a bump into the Wrestling Hall of Fame. That's happening, What are you going to do? Induct the security guard in the parking lot next? Yeah. I, I just, you know, well, Miss Presley loved wrestling. Yeah, he bought Ann Casey a fur coat. Mm-hmm. And he'd show up at the matches. Yeah. You know, George Thorogood was at one of my matches and took me out one night. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with that, but to put him in a Hall of Fame, that I have a problem. Well, Mister T was in the first two WrestleManias, so I kind of get that. One thing I did love, I loved what Roddy Piper did in his book, though, because Vince always seemed to credit Hulk Hogan with WrestleMania being what it is. Roddy Piper credited Cindy Lauper, which I thought was really cool. That oh, he 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 used to follow around behind her like a puppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, but Cindy Lauper now see a lot of things. Uh, to my knowledge, Cindy Lauper was Lou Albino's niece. Oh, I didn't know that. Is that, that true? That, that I I believe it's true. That's what I've been told. And the person who told me that, I I I, I don't think would lie to me. Okay. Uh, but if you look at it, before Cindy ever even got into wrestling, mm-hmm. look at her video, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. <laughs> yeah, Lou Obano. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but yeah, she did a lot. I mean, Cindy Lauper was over like crazy during the eighties. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, I'm sure she had a lot to do with drawing that card. Yeah. And, and her and Wendy worked so well together. Oh, they did. Yep. Yeah, it was you know, Wendy I mean, Rick Richter against Leilani Kai. I almost won. <laughs> yeah, they had a little scuffle between Lauper and Moolah in there too. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Yeah, well, Moolah tried to interfere, and then Cindy kind of pulled her out of there or whatever, you know? <laughs> right. Oh, I, oh, God, I can see that. That little thing? Yeah. That's her heart? Yeah. <laughs> but, no, Cindy, Cindy did a real good job rest, uh, managing when. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that was one, that's, that's when Wendy should, that's why Wendy should have kept the belt. I think Wendy should have kept the belt too. Like, um, and uh, again, a lot of this was uh, blamed on Moolah. Moolah was also blamed because the Jumping Bomb Angels and the Glamour Girls, uh, Judy Martin and Lenny Kai, didn't have a WrestleMania four bout. And I'm like, like seriously, you know, I, yeah. Now I I know this story. Yeah. I know this story because I got it from Judy Martin. Yeah. Judy Martin and Leilani go over to Japan. Yep. They're wrestling jumping bomb angels. Mm-hmm. They've got the tag team titles. Judy and Judy and Leilani. Yeah. Well, Moolah calls them up because Moolah was the manager over all the girls. Mm-hmm. And she tells them that Vinny told her that the girls were to uh, drop the belt to the jumping bomb angels and get it back a week later. Okay. That phone call never happened. Vinny never told Mula to do that. In fact, about an hour after the match, Vinny called Judy and told her, you just screwed yourself. You will not be in WrestleMania. There will be no more matches for the tag team titles because you've taken all the value out of the matches. And Moolah knew that's what she, that she did it on purpose. 
Wow. And you know, that would have been a great WrestleMania match. I mean, Lilani Kai had done two WrestleManias. Judy Martin and the Bomb Angels, they were never in a WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And this would have been a great they tag were, match. They were supposed to be. Yep. It was supposed to be Judy and Leilani against Jumping Bomb Angels, semi-main event. Yeah. And since WrestleMania it, 4 pretty much sucked, that would have been a highlight match. Right. Yep. Well... Mu, once again, Mula saw somebody getting more popularity than she had. Wow. And she had to take him down, just like she did Wendy. Wow. Mula was a great wrestler. Mm-hmm. But like I said on Dark Side of the Ring, she didn't know when to quit. Yep. You know, there's a certain time, you know, when you let... Your protege take over because yep. that's why you train. Them. That's how your name gets carried on. Moore would not allow that to happen. Yep. You know, and I know that you like that Moore was in the ring at eighty-two. Mm-hmm. But that schoolgirl outfit with that finish that they did. That was disgusting to me. Yeah, and that would have been a great, great match. And uh, you know what? I still think Vince could have had that match. That's what really disgusts me about it. Moore put the clamp down on that. Yeah. Down in my mind. Yeah. No, that was, that was disgusting. But uh, you and uh, Velvet McIntyre had held the tag team championship, and you two definitely... Uh, brought value to it but um and yeah you two were terrific tag team champions and you fought some great heel teams too like when you took on wendy richter and penny Mar- uh mitchell you know i mean those were some great tag matches and you took on uh martin and leilani kai and it, mm-hmm. yeah you you two were there were some fantastic women wrestlers throughout my career yep Joyce Gray- Wendy Richter, Judy mm-hmm. Martin, Leilani Kai, um, Penny Mitchell, Glendine Browning, yep. Velvet McIntyre. Yep. You know, if Mula would have just stepped back and put the push behind these women, yep. can you imagine where women's wrestling would be today? Exactly. Exactly. And of course, you know, when you had your neck injury, Desiree, excuse me, Desiree Peterson was, I guess, brought in as your replacement. Is that true? Yes. Yes, she was. Yeah, it must have been heartbreaking for you to have to walk away, but I know that you and Desiree had a good uh, relationship. Oh, we still do. Yeah. Still do. I, I mean, it wasn't her fault that they handed her the belt. Nope. And I'm not sure anybody would have turned it down. Why was she selected? Because she was the next upcoming female wrestler in Moolah's eyes. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, she was a pretty young lady. She wore the belt well. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen any of the matches. Um, I know that her and Velvet were on the road together for a while, but... Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure, sure really about where the logistics behind that came. Okay. Um, but she, she did what she had to do to make money. Well, it kind of reminded me of the British Bulldogs when uh, Dynamite Kid had the back injury there, and and uh, Davy Boy Smith ended up having like uh, I don't know Billy Jack Haynes, a junkyard dog, uh, people like that would fill in for him, you know, and and uh, yeah, yep. So, so it kind of put me in mind of that. But the tag team titles, they just kind of got vanquished. And again, that was a sad thing to happen. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't even, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I know that it, they just disappeared until Judy and Leilani got them. Yeah, that just happened out of nowhere. <laughs> right? Yep. Uh, and things were kind of crazy. <laughs> Um, I can't. I can't speak on a lot of it. There's some I can because I have talked to the girls. Mm-hmm. But things got really crazy after I left. 
Yes, I, I don't I don't doubt it. You know, and uh, I'm kind of glad I wasn't there to see it happen. Did you ever uh, get a chance to meet Sensational Sherry? Ah. Uh, There's somebody I had never hear complaints about. Oh, if you didn't like Sherry, you didn't like ice cream. Yeah, I've heard nice Sherry things. Loves. I've seen her take b- bumps from Hulk Hogan, of all people, you know? I mean... Sherry mm-hmm. was in good shape, huh? Oh, yes, she was. Yeah. Sherry started out with Moolah. Yeah. And uh, her and I used to, he lived in, in this apartment that was down down beside Moolah's house. And there was a dock that went out into the pond. Mm-hmm. And Sherry and I used to go out there and lay in the sun and drink beer. Okay. And Sherry was just, she's just a wonderful person. That's you what know, I've heard. She didn't have a bad word to say about anybody. And the way that Mula did her was wrong. Yep. Uh, but Sherry, Sherry was a survivor. Mm-hmm. And she came out on top. Remember Luna Vachon? Never got to meet the lady. Wish I could have. I heard, I heard too, despite her crazy persona, I heard good things about her as well. You don't hear a bad word about Luna. No. You don't hear a bad word about Sherry. You don't hear a bad word about Wendy. No. And you definitely don't hear a bad word about Velvet. No. What's um? You know, what's Velvet McIntyre doing nowadays? Well, she's w- raising her twin boys. Okay. Um, she's taking care of her mom. Her dad passed away a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's. I'm not sure where she's working, but she's a house mouse. You know, she, she's got her job. She's got her family. Mm-hmm. Um, she doesn't do much wrestling. Every once in a while, she might show up to a local match as a guest res- referee. Okay. But she's pretty much just involved with family. And uh, her life has been rough the last couple of years where her dad died and all that. And uh, don't, don't take it hard that Velvet doesn't do interviews. Oh, I don't. Velvet, yeah. Velvet can't hear. Yeah, that's what you said, that she had problems hearing. Yeah, and and she's got so much going on, taking care of her mom, taking care of her husband and boys, mm-hmm. that she just doesn't have time anymore for wrestling. Yeah. No, I've always loved Velvet. In fact, if it wasn't for Velvet, I probably would not have discovered you, you know? And uh, You're not the only one to have said that. <laughs> well, Vel- Velvet, uh, like I said, she was in one of the WrestleManias, and she's in one of the Survivor Series. Like, th- the unfortunate thing with you is, especially with your injury, you didn't get in any of those big events, you know, and those were highlighted pay-per-views. So, I mean, Velvet yeah. managed to get in some and caught my attention, but I'm glad she caught my attention just enough that I would explore her and then discover you, you know? Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, yeah. I'm glad Velvet got to do all of that, you know, because she worked very hard to become a wrestler. Yeah. I don't and, take offense at all that she wouldn't do the interview, you know. Like, I, I get it, you know. Right. And, yeah. I, I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you for your understanding. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan. When you see her, please tell her I said hello. Oh, I will. Yes. I will. Yep. I, I plan on going up to see her sometime next year. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, Do you and, I'm in, uh, huh? I'm in Washington State. I'm about 350 miles away from her. Yeah, you know what? I'm uh, four hours ahead of you. <laughs> oh, four or three? Four. I'm actually an hour ahead of uh, Toronto. I'm in New Brunswick, Canada. Have you ever been up this mm-hmm. way before? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I live in God, Fredericton. God. I I was there in, uh, I think we wrestled in Edmonton. Okay. And it was the middle of June, and it was 60 degrees. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to go out and play in the pool, so I walked outside. (laughs) Yeah, we're we're an hour ahead of uh, Toronto. Uh, We're in that little New Brunswick area. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't realize there were four time zones. I thought there were only three. (laughs) Yeah, I've heard that before. Now, do you and Velva ever do the conventions, like the wrestling conventions, or? 
No, I, I'm getting ready to do a convention uh, June 1st in, uh, I believe it's Monroe, New Jersey. Okay. The they have up there on June 1st. Oh, fantastic. I will be there from 9 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. What other wrestlers are going to be there? I know they usually have uh, uh, four or five. Despina Montagas is going to be there. Okay. Mine is going to be there. Oh, nice. Um, there's going to be several of the WWE wrestlers there. I can't name them. I'm sorry. I <laughs> I don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, I, no fault there. But, yeah, it, there, from what I saw, there's going to be probably 30 to 40 wrestlers there. Okay. Have you... And that's going to be at the Ramada Inn in Monroe, uh, Monroe, New Jersey. Is this your first con? Uh, this will be my second. I went to a Rhode Island con mm -hmm. about... I think it was 2012. What was the most uh, uh, interesting thing you've ever been asked to sign? Uh, people are pretty nice to me. They haven't, they haven't asked me to sign anything really outrageous. Okay. <laughs> um, one woman wanted me to sign her back so she could get my name tattooed with my signature on her back. I hear that a lot. <laughs> About people, well, get, yeah. I, you know, it's flattery. You know, like I said before, if it wasn't for the fans, nobody would know my name. Mm hmm So, you know, for her to think that much of me, that's 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 pretty much because the only way that tattoo is going away is laser surgery. Yeah. Well, I also, too, like I was at a con not too long ago. I was at Comic Con, and I went to one of the vendors, and oh my goodness, I just had nostalgia crazy. Remember those rubber wrestling action figures back in the 80s? Yes. I grabbed about a dozen of those. I've got a, big, <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of those home. And uh, even though you couldn't, like, move them, you know, you couldn't break them. They were so awesome. And I always felt bad because... Yourself and Velvet McIntyre, Wendy Richter, like you two, you you guys never had any figurines done of yourselves, huh? Uh no, not that I. If if they've been done, they've been done by a private person who's altered something else. But no, and and if anybody should have had it done, it should have been Wendy Richter and Velvet McIntyre. Oh come on, you deserve it too. I, I still have this thing of I was only in the business for four years. Yes, you but... Know, you look, Wendy and Velvet and Judy and Joyce, they were all in there for the long haul. Yeah, but you know what? You made an impression. Look, I'm, I'm talking to you now. You made an impression on me. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate that. I had, I'll tell you what, I did have fun. I wouldn't trade those years for anything. Well, here's a question for you. You hear a lot about ribbing stories. You know, Owen Hart was a big ribber. Mr. Fuji, you hear stories about him ribbing. And Mr. Perfect, uh, Kerr Henning. What's the best ribbing story that you know of on the road? Uh, well, the best one I know of was told on me. Okay. By uh, Ted DiBiase. Oh, the Million Dollar Man? Yeah, we were in Louisiana. And me and Wendy... We're sharing a room with with Nikita uh, uh, Jim Neidhart. Jim the Anvil Neidhart, okay. Well, he was. We knew we could trust him. Okay. And working for Moolah, you didn't make a lot of money. Um, and Jim had a family that he was trying to save money for. Okay. So we roomed together on this on this trip. And I'm up there and I'm ironing my dress for the uh, for the arena that night because. Once again, back in the day, when you showed up to the arena, you know, the guys had suits on. The girls had, you know, nice dresses, high heels. They had their makeup done, their hair done. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing there, and I'm ironing my dress. And the phone rings. Okay. And I pick it up. Hello, how? This is Vicki. This is Jim Neidhart's wife. I want to know what you're doing in a motel room with my husband. <laughs> and I started to tell us, look, I said, the reason that Jim's splitting the room with us 
you know, we trust him. He's a gentleman. We know he's never cheated on you, so we know he's safe. And she just started going on and on and on. <laughs> she called Jim so many names it wasn't even funny. And then she made me mad when she started talking junk about Jim. And I said, look, lady. I said, the only reason he's in this room with us is because he's trying to save money for you. And I really don't appreciate how you're talking about him. And she says, well, I'll just let you know. I'm down in the lobby. I'll be up to your room in a minute. And I said, fine, I'll be right here. And I slammed the phone down. And then all of a sudden it hit me. There was a very mad wife who thinks I'm sleeping with her husband. Mm -hmm. And she's coming up to my room. And I turned the ironing board towards the door. And I quit ironing my dress because my hand was shaking too bad. And I just stood there and watched that door. <laughs> because I knew the next thing I was going to see was a, a, a very mad wife come through with a shotgun. <laughs> the phone rings again. And I hear all this laughing in the background. <laughs> and... Teddy goes, Vicky. I just wanted to let let you off the hook. I had I had one of the girls pull, uh, call you. Jim's Jim's wife isn't really here. <laughs> well, after I went to the bathroom and changed my drawers, <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Oh, by the way, I really like the way you handled that." <laughs> Gee, thanks, guys. I just lost 10 years of my life. <laughs> what do you... Th uh, another one. Okay, yeah, please. Velvet McIntyre. Okay. My dear, darling friend and partner. Okay. <laughs> we're wrestling for Don Owens, and we're somewhere at Goldendale or somewhere out in the middle of nowhere in Washington State, and we're wrestling at a, a, a school. Mm-hmm. Well, the girls, we were always, like, semi-main event. And I like to take a very long shower after the matches. Okay. And usually by the time I got out of the shower, everybody was gone but Velvet. Well, I come out of the shower. All I've got on is nothing. <laughs> because I go to grab my towel, my towel's gone. Okay. Um, and then I start hollering for Velvet. I don't hear a word. So I go to I go to the door. You know, we were in the shower room, the gym shower room. Mm -hmm. And I open the door and I start hollering for a security guard. Because now not only have I figured out my towel is gone, my grip with my wrestling gear in it, and my clothes that I wore to the arena that night are also gone. <laughs> and I keep hollering and there's not a soul. That answers me. <laughs> well, this is when they had the big, you know, the big rolls of paper towels, the brown ones? Yep. That's the only thing there was in that gym room that I could cover myself with. <laughs> so I wrap myself up like a mummy, and I go out in the parking lot, and there's my car. Walk up to my car. Sitting on my front seat is my purse and my keys. In the passenger seat is my clothes and my grip. So I go to open the door, the dang thing's locked. <laughs> now, you, you got to imagine me wrapped up like a mummy in these paper towels. Yeah. I mean, it, it keeps slipping and things keep showing, and then all of a sudden I hear giggles. And Little Eagle and one of the other Mr. wrestlers were there, and they were famous for pulling ribs. Okay. So I'm going. I'm getting ready to go back in and try to find a hanger because I know how to open a locked car. Okay. And I hear more giggles, and I stop. And I happen. I had a Chevy, uh, a, a station wagon at the time. Mm-hmm. And they were kind enough to leave the back window unlocked. So I go in the back window, over the back seat, unlock the doors. And I hear just laughter everywhere. <laughs> For 30 years, I blamed that on Little Eagle. <laughs> Until one day I was talking to Velvet. <laughs> and, 
And I said, do you remember when? And when she started laughing, I knew then. It was her. <laughs> Velvet McIntyre pulled that, huh? You, you got to watch that sweet innocent little thing. <laughs> Still fool you in a heartbeat. I guess they said she was a fiery redhead in the ring. I guess she's, I guess she's a good ribber too. I bet Owen Hart would have blushed with envy if he heard that. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did. We did. Uh, was it me and Wendy? I think. Yeah. Did a tour in Cal Calgary with the uh, with um, uh, the Hearts. Okay. And uh, I was actually on the radio with Bret Hart one day. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about all the ribs they used to pull on all the girls that came up there. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you never pulled any on me and Wendy. He says, Cause that's because you were one of the boys. He <laughs> said, all these other girls come up here, they'd be on the phone to my dad every day complaining about something. Okay. So they did stuff like they super glued their, uh, the zippers on their bags closed. <laughs> um... <laughs> One guy went out and got some dog poop and put it in one of the girls' bags. I heard that was pulled on, what was it, Sable, I think it was? Well, then, she must have been doing some complaining. Yeah, I, I think it was Sable that was pulled on. Don't quote me on that. but. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Bret Hart gave me one of the biggest compliments in the world when he said, you and Wendy were just like one of the boys. Okay. Said, you just rode, rode with the flow. <laughs> Did Mr. Fuji ever pull a rib on you? Because I heard he was uh, infamous for it. Uh, no, sir, he didn't. I, uh, <laughs> we weren't... See, with the girls, we weren't lo like the guys. Okay. The guys would go into a territory, they'd stay six months, a year. They could stay five years. Mm-hmm. But with the girls, we were limited. Okay. There's on only so much of a tale you can tell between four people or two people. Mm-hmm. So we go into a territory, we might stay two or three weeks, then we're gone to another territory. Okay. Uh, so the guys were pretty nice to us. You know, they they didn't pick on us so much as they did each other. Okay. Now, there was one prima donna. I'll let him rena his name remain nameless. Okay. Um, he, pu he, tr he pulled a rib on me. Okay. And... The next town, he went to go get his boots to go put them on to get in the ring. He's looking all over the place for his boots, and I pointed up to the ceiling where I'd super glued them to the roof. <laughs> that was... He didn't know that I, I had help from the boys doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are good. Like Those are funny. Like, you hear a lot of stories like the British Bulldogs were pretty nasty. Like, you... There's, of course, the infamous story between the Bulldogs and the Rougeau brothers, uh, between Jacques Rougeau and the Dynamite Kid that got really ugly. But, um, but I've, heard, I've heard some of those stories. Yeah. And I have never had a rib like that pulled on me. Yeah. Never had anybody pull. The ribs that were pulled on me, once your heart stopped beating through your chest, mm -hmm. you could laugh at it. Yeah. You know, some of the ribs that I've heard the guys have pulled on each other and pulled on these other women, I've never had anything like that happen to me. Yeah. And, and you know, I just, again, and again, um, some of these stories, like the honky tonk man was saying some of the stuff, like even in the Dynamite Kids book, was uh, not even true on some of the stuff. And, uh, and I'm just going by what's been said in some of these interviews. And, you know, I, I know he had, uh, Dynamite had a, a nasty reputation with uh, ribbing, but I love hearing the real funny ones, you know, especially, you know, like Owen Hart would pull ones and the people didn't hate him for it, you know. But Right, yeah, you, you, we were having fun. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these guys pulled these ribs and they were just downright nasty and mean. Yeah. And that's the 1% that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the 1%. You know, a lot of people had problems with the Dynamite Kid. I didn't have any problems with him Yeah. because I was told about some of the ribs he pulled, and I just walked up to him and I said, pull it on me. 
<laughs> you'll never pull another rib. And I can promise you that. You, you didn't have to hit him with a roll of uh, coins like Jacques, huh? Nope, never had. That's all I had to say. Yeah. You know, um, I, I really never had any problems. There was one guy that I had a problem with, and Bill Watts fired me. Okay. Um, we were in a town in, uh, somewhere in Louisiana or Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and we were in, like, a convention building. Okay. Well, it was a maze to get back to the ring. Okay. You know, go from our dressing room to the ring. Mm-hmm. And Harry, uh, Magnum C.A., had asked, uh, asked this guy earlier, you know, look, Princess needs a ride to the next town, um, and you're the only car that's got room. Can you take her with you? <laughs> no, 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 I can't do that. If I do that, if my wife finds that hair in my car, I'm, I'm just, I'll never hear the end of it. Okay. Well, the next night at town, at this convention center, Bill Watts has this same guy walk me out to the ring. Okay. And he's going this way, left, right, left, right, and, and we're not getting to the ring, and now they've called me for the second time. <laughs> and then he keeps going, and he keeps going. I said, are you lost or what? And he opens this door to this uh, room, which is not the arena. They're calling me for the third time. And he expected me to do something sexually with him. Oh. And I looked at him. I said, you know what? I might not be able to whoop your butt, but you're damn sure going to know I was there. Now, you get me to the ring, and you get me to the ring now. Yeah. And... I went back in the dressing room, and, and see, Magnum T.A., Terry Allen, and I were very good friends, even before either one of us started training. Mm-hmm. And Terry walked up, and he said, what, what the hell happened? And I told him. And you could see fire in Terry's eyes. Yeah. Because, you know, that was my brother mm-hmm. from another mother. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, I'll be back in a minute. And I guess he went and talked to Bill Watts because that wrestler, I was in that, it, me and Wendy were there for another two weeks. And I never saw that wrestler in another match. Okay. I was wondering, um, like, one guy I'm always impressed with is Terry Funk, and the Funk Brothers, you know. Uh-huh. Terry did a lot of crazy stuff with barbed wire and, <laughs> and fire and stuff. What did you think of the hardcore wrestling? I mean, you see Mick Foley uh, going off the top of that cage 15 feet and lands on the timekeeper's table. And and um, I really appreciate what these guys do, but I want to, want to know what you thought of that kind of wrestling. They ain't enough money or liquor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, wouldn't do, I wouldn't do hardcore wrestling for anything in the world. <laughs> In fact, one time when uh, Velvet and I were wrestling against each other in Canada, mm-hmm. Al Tomko wanted us to do a jello wrestling match in a local bar. Okay. He barely made it away from us alive. <laughs> he was, but, but, but you're going to make $500. I said, no, we're not. <laughs> well, you could have had dessert. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't want to wrestle on tacks or glass or... No. You know, I broke my neck just doing regular wrestling. Yeah. It, but, you know, Terry's gotten into that hardcore wrestling, but I, we did, I did tours with Terry and Piper. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terry wasn't that... Terry was crazy back then, but he wasn't as crazy as he is now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and by the way, uh, if Terry hears this, Terry, I'm sorry about your wife. My condolences, brother. Oh, is his wife gone? His wife passed away. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah, and they, they, that, that was another couple that were two halves of the same hole. Yes. Well, I remember that movie Beyond the Mat. Uh, a lot, there was a lot of focus on Terry, and you can really see he had a wonderful family life, and his wife was very supportive. Like, you get to see a side of Terry that you never saw in the ring. You saw the family man. Yeah. 
Yeah, Terry, Piper. Yep. A lot of the guys were that way. You didn't get to see that side of them. That was the soft side of them. Yeah, Piper was with Kitty all these years, you know, like... Um, they got married in 1978. Yep. And uh, just judging from interviewing Colton Ariel, it's like they raised some great kids. It takes good it, it takes good parents, you know. Yeah. And that's one thing about Piper. He loved his wife and he loved his family. Yes. Yes, I got that. That, that was first in his life. Mm-hmm. The only reason he came back to wrestling as late in his life as he did was for his family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did the movie They Live, and I got, I, I, this is something I heard. I heard Vince got the idea because They Live was so well-received, and Piper was so well-received with it. They decided to do No Holds Barred with Hulk Hogan playing himself, and I think we all know what kind of an actor Hulk Hogan is. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> What, how, much, how much money did that, did that movie bring in? What, $10? Something like that. I saw it in the theater, and looking back at it today, uh, what a piece of junk. <laughs> right. But They right. Live is, like, it's still, it was a great movie, you know? <laughs> oh, it's, it, it's a cult movie now. Yep. But it's no right hope. up there with Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yep. You know, they, they, have, they have showings of, the, of They Live. And they do the midnight showing just like they do with Blackie Horror Picture Show. Did you and Velvet ever be in any movies? No, sir. No? So, uh, I think about the time that just before I brought, broke my neck uh, was when, uh, oh, shoot, what was the name of that movie with uh, Columbo in it? Oh. California Dolls. Okay. <laughs> um, what was weird was they had a blonde and a brunette. That had long hair, just like Velvet and I did. Mm -hmm. And they were pretty much... <laughs> Velvet and I watched it, and it was like watching ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as getting in movies and all that, no. I, I wasn't there long enough. Here's a question. How many, You mentioned the Jello wrestling thing that you guys were asked to do. How often were you and Velvet asked to mud wrestle or anything like that? And I know you guys didn't do it. No, uh, number one, that's, that's some real dangerous stuff there. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't even have to be touched by an opponent, and you can go down and break, break something. Yeah. You know, so I'm not taking any respect away from anybody who does it, but it just wasn't for me. And after we almost killed Al Tomko, <laughs> um, pretty much everybody just figured out that, that Velvet and I were professional wrestlers, and that was it. Yeah. Did you guys throw him in the jello? I wanted to throw him off a cliff. <laughs> One of the funniest segments I ever seen, there was uh, a big vat of, uh, I think it was pudding. And uh, <laughs> Vicky Guerrero threw Stephanie McMahon face down. <laughs> and Stephan Please tell me it wasn't chocolate pudding. I think it was chocolate pudding, yep. Oh, that nasty. Yeah. Or it was butterscotch, one of them. But I, one of the funny funny things was that Stephanie kept pulling the referee in there. And <laughs> right. I mean, I gotta give Stephanie our props. She she wasn't afraid to do stuff like that, you know. So. Oh yeah, I, I don't take anything away from her, you know, as an entertainer. Mm -hmm. But the way that her and her dad mm -hmm. and the McMahon's have treated wrestlers, I just don't I don't have anything for them. Did, what did you think of Shane McMahon? I don't know. No? Okay. I, I, don't, I don't really think anything of him because, like I said, I haven't really watched WWE wrestling since 1987. Okay. I hear more positive about Shane. That's why I say. Um, like I said, I don't know. I've never met the man. Um, I, ha I can say I haven't heard anything bad about him. Okay. What do you think of Ronda Rousey? Wow! <laughs> yeah. Now I made I made it. I made my, myself go to YouTube and watch some segments of her match. Mm-hmm. And what should tell everybody about how great a wrestler she is? Mm-hmm. 
Piper Backer. Piper did Backer. Yep. Piper didn't just put his name on anybody. No. So she earned the respect from Piper. Yep. Yeah. You know, and uh, what I have seen of her wrestling, she's good. She's very good. Did you see her WrestleMania match where she and Kurt Angle took on uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon? No, I did not. That is worth seeing because uh, there's a moment where she and Triple H are face to face, and uh, and uh, Triple H puts the ref in the corner and tells her to come, and she just goes right in and starts just blasting him right into the corner. <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> and I've you know, got I mean, no doubt that she could beat him for real. <laughs> right? Yep. Uh, I, like I said, Piper Bacter. Yep. And I guarantee you, I don't care how big or how bad you are, like I told that guy, you might not, she might not whip you, but you're going to know she was there. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that, but... girl's got, that girl's got some street in her. She does. She's got a uh, great energy in the ring, too. Yes, she does. Yeah. What did you yeah, think like, of... Ah, ah. <laughs> what What did you think of uh, The Undertaker? I know that that was after you, but he has got quite a reputation. What did you think of him? I'm pretty sure you know who he I is. I think the gimmick mm-hmm. was absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. And Paul Moody... As his manager? Yep. On the money. Mm-hmm. That was probably one of the best gimmicks I've seen since the old days. Yep. And you could believe it. Mm-hmm. You know, th- this guy is huge. But he can move. Oh, yeah. He would leap over the top rope without touching it and land I on an opponent outside the ring. I know. I I watched that first time he did it. I went, whoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, I think he could just take a step and step over the top of it, too, couldn't he? <laughs> uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bill, Bill Moody uh, was was really good as his manager, too. Yeah. You know, they, they, that was that was akin to the sheep herders. You know, that's that was just, that's classic. Well, he was 21 and 0. At WrestleMania, until uh, Brock Lesnar broke that streak, that's a pretty impressive streak. I think he should have had the streak cap personally, but right. Yep. What did well, you think of uh, Andre the Giant? Very, very, very nice man with a heart as big as his body. Yeah. And very intelligent, mm-hmm. very gentle. Uh, there's a story that Leilani Kai tells. Mm-hmm. Peggy Fowler also tells it. Andre had a had a really big crush on Leilani. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he, he'd do things like rent a helicopter in New York and fly her around New York, looking at New York from he- helicopter. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I believe it was Club 21. It was one of those big clubs in New York. Andre had his own bo- box in this in this uh, bar. Okay. And he had invited uh, Peggy and Leilani to come up and sit with him in his, in his box. And the story goes that Peggy and Leilani are going up the steps to go to Andre, and Andy Gibbs goes running up the steps, pushes Peggy and Leilani out of the way, and he runs up to Andre, and Andre goes, Boy... I don't know how you were raised, but where I was raised, you don't push women out of the way like you just did those two ladies. <laughs> and Andy, I just want an autograph. He said, boy, get away from me. Oh. <laughs> he was, and Andre didn't get mad. Mm-hmm. But you, did, you didn't push on He was a gentleman from the get-go. Yeah, he, I'll and, tell you, it's, it's, my brother and I were watching a match between him and Stan Hansen. And I'm going to tell you, you know, it doesn't matter. Vince can have whoever he wants slam him. But Harley Race and Stan Hansen, neither one did the steroids. And, boy, they put great matches on with Andre. Yeah, well, Andre could wrestle. Yep. You know, if you put him with the right people, he could wrestle. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, when you put whole, whole, you know, you got a winter promoter, you got to kind of gauge your guys. Yeah. And you want people that are going to play off of each other. Yeah. And you want people that aren't afraid to put somebody else over. Yep. Uh, I was watching um, uh, a, a video. It was, uh, uh, oh, shoot, uh, Mick Jagger and David Bowie. Okay. And they were singing, I believe it was Under Pressure. Okay. Now, these are two of the biggest names in the music business, right? Mm-hmm. Mick Jagger would do his bit, and David Bowie would just step back and let him shine. Then David Bowie would get up, and he'd do his bit, and Mick Jagger would take a step back and just watch David Bowie and let him shine. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the way it used to be in wrestling. Okay. You know, it's not whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. Yep. And you can't somebody over... That's not putting you over. Yep. You get a guy in there that won't sell, won't take a bump, you know, because of his ego, you don't have a match. I don't care who you put him with. Yep. Well, Hulk Hogan apparently would not put Breher over or Jake the Snake Roberts or uh, Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, because of their size, apparently. And I'm kind of like... Um, if anybody could have made that argument, couldn't Andre have made that to Hogan? Yes. Yep. In a minute. Yep. Um, he also could have made the point of, you don't know how to wrestle. Yep. <laughs> you know, uh, as far as Brett and 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 Jake, he would uh, no, he wouldn't put Jake Snake over. No, he wouldn't put Jake the Snake over. And uh, Jake, I mean, they ended up killing that storyline. I guess Jake had DDT'd Hogan in the snake pit and put the snake on him. And, because, and Jake was telling this at one of the cons. He said that because fans booed him, that whole uh, that whole um, uh, uh, thing got pretty much killed. And Jake said, it doesn't matter whether they're, who they're cheering, you're going to put asses in seats. That's it. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. You know, when, I'm, when I was laying on that mat, you, you said something about how I sold. Yep. How can I do a war dance and make a comeback if I haven't been beat down? Exactly. You know, what is a match when you beat the snot out of somebody, beat the snot out of somebody, beat the snot out of them, and then you pin them too? Yep. That's not a match. That's a spot job. You haven't given the fans anything. I'm just looking at the uh, Mid-South uh, wrestling uh, roster here that you was on. I see Sting on here. This is another thing I hate about Triple H. One of the WrestleManias, uh, I forget which one now, Sting was the one guy, that, uh, that the last guy to sign with WWE. And of course, okay. that, that WrestleMania, the one WrestleMania Sting is in, he's facing Triple H. People wanted to see Sting against Undertaker, which I can't believe they didn't go with. Really? And Yeah, and, but he ends up facing Triple H, and Triple H beats him by hitting him with a sledgehammer. And I'm sitting here thinking, what an ego against WTCW, because Jim Cornette said they could have had Sting win that, and they could have sold all kinds of merchandise around Sting. Mm -hmm. And of course, because of Triple H's ego, that didn't happen. Ego has no place in wrestling, in entertainment. Mm hmm. Like I said, it's not whether you win or lose. You know, did you give that fan his money's worth? Exactly. Did he, did he walk out of that arena hating the bad guy, loving the good guy, and coming back to the next match to see the bad guy get Exactly. You know, and, and, and I think that's been forgotten. Yep. You know, because if, if you don't if you don't have butts in those seats, you don't have a match. 
Exactly. Yeah. Another guy that uh, Vince seemed to have a problem with was Ricky Steamboat. Steamboat won the Intercontinental Champion from Savage. And apparently, because Steamboat, Steamboat ha- would have to defend the title once a month. He wanted right. to take, he wanted to take uh, I think, three weeks off for the birth of his kid. And Vince threw a big temper tantrum, apparently, and wanted him to drop the belt. That was an excuse. Yep, because I guess Steamboat was too small. <laughs> really? That that that's what I understand. I haven't heard Vince say this. I have I'm heard. Sorry, but I was a fan when Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood mm-hmm. were doing the Pacific Northwest with the tag team belts. Yeah. You know, Ricky Steamboat is akin to Jimmy Snuka. Yep. You know, with his wrestling style, the fans loved him. Yep. And that goes back to what I was saying about the everyday guy. Yep. Being able to have that dream of becoming a wrestler. Mm hmm. They can't have that dream anymore because you got to be the size of Triple H. Yeah. You know, you got to be built up like Lex, uh, Lex, uh, what's his name? Lex Luger? I was going to say Luger, but. I uh, I thought I was going Superman on me there for a minute with Lex Luthor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you can dream when when you get when you get guys all the guys are that size. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you turn around and you put a bunch of cookie cutter women in the ring. Yeah. Who don't have a muscle in their whole body. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how I don't know. I don't know why he's still in business. I don't either. I know Bruno San Martino didn't have very positive things to say about uh, where Vince took the the business. Well, I was I was involved. I was going to make a documentary. Mm-hmm. And I did a bunch of interviews with a bunch of old school wrestlers. Okay. Um. Overall, and I probably did twenty five to thirty interviews. Okay. And one of my main questions was, if you could go back in time and change one thing in wrestling, what would it be? Okay. Overall, except for one person, it was the day that Vince Sr. turned the business over to Vince Jr. Yeah. Because that was the end of wrestling as we know it. Yeah. Yeah. And see, Vin, Vinny's not listening to his fans. No, he's not, clearly. I mean, I've got a friend of mine that's running uh, shows up in Portland. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lucas Dakota at Oregon Wrestling Club. They're back to old school. Yeah. And if you watch ROH, and they're having technical matches. The first match that I went to at Lucas Dakota, the, the first match was a went to a 20-minute draw. Okay. It was a completely technical match. Mm Mm-hmm. There was no heel. There was no baby face. It was straight-out technical wrestling. Mm Mm-hmm. When the bell rang at the 20-minute mark, and it was called a draw, for five minutes after that, this crowd of 300 people were screaming, five more minutes. Wow. They wanted five more minutes of technical wrestling. Mm-hmm. With ROH, if you watch ROH when they when they do a uh, technical match, mm-hmm. and they're doing a lot more technical matches now, yep. you will hear the crowd stamping and clapping, going, this is wrestling. Well, you know, I'm looking down this list, I mean, for Mid-South, uh, do you have any stories on Bruiser Brody? No, I don't. Okay. I uh, was in the dressing room with him. He was always a gentleman. Okay. Um, mainly the stories I have are with, like, Piper, Ted DiBiase, the Samoans. Yeah. That's pretty much who I hung with. I okay. don't know how I became a babyface because I hung with the heels. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know King Kong Bundy? We just lost him recently. 
No, I did not. I no. Got pleasure, man. Um, didn't he come in around '84? Uh, I think he was before that. I don't know when he came into Vince's territory, mind you, but. Oh, see, one like I said, once I got with Mula, mm-hmm. Mula was really against us hanging with the guys. Okay. Um, and I got locked out of Mula, Mula's uh, gate, gated sanctuary more nights than I didn't get locked out. Okay. <laughs> because I. I'd go up to Charlotte and hang with the guys. Okay. And when I come back, I had to climb that blasted gate because uh, she had a lock and I couldn't drive my car through it. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, yeah. big, big Cat Ernie Ladd? Uh, Ernie was a sweetheart. Ernie's a sweetheart. Yeah. Well, dude, there was a lot uh, of I'll... yeah, there was a lot of great t- talent uh, listed here, you know, and. Uh, Jim Cornette praises these people all the time, you know, and uh, yeah, you mentioned a lot of good people. And of course, you worked with Judy Martin. How tough was Judy Martin? She was tough. She was as tough as she was soft. She was a great wrestler. She was. She is a great friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, people told me, uh, the girls down at Moolah's warned me I was getting ready to go on the road with Judy. And they kept warning me, you better watch out. She, she, she'll hit you so hard, you know, she, you'll think it's next week. And so I'm all prepared. I'm figuring I'm going to be bruised head to toe. Okay. And I get in the ring, and I, we're working a match, and she goes to drop kick me, and I just had to look down to see if she hit me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just a fantastic, she is a fantastic wrestler. Uh, of course, with those big things she had on her chest, she'd go to cover you, and she'd almost smother you. <laughs> and there was one day, we were on TV, too, and I, I was in a mood. Mm-hmm. And when I got in a mood, look out. <laughs> <laughs> and she went to cover me, and them things landed right in my face. <laughs> so I blew a zerbert on them. And you, you'll you know the match when you see it, because <laughs> Judy jumped up like she was a scalded cat. <laughs> and she was telling the referee what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you had a... You know... <laughs> You had a match with Wendy that uh, you were pr- almost in an uncomfortable position where... Uh, she would put her, I think she had her knees on your pigtails, but she was almost sitting right, well, she, I think if you'd break down on your head, but you were almost out of breathing room down there, and I was like, how the frig get out of there? Oh, my God, yeah. Well, we, you know, I guess we were like the guys, we just, you just go with the fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I'm not sure I remember that match. I'm gonna to have to look that one up. I saw, yeah, I watched it for the second time today. I, I think Wendy was wearing a pink outfit or something, or a red or something. But uh, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, Did, was it your idea to have them grab your uh, pigtails? Actually, I think Velvet started that crap when we first started. I think Sandy <laughs> started that. You know, I, I, it's a weapon. You yeah. know, it's a great weapon. It's it's there. Use it. <laughs> well, Jeeper, I don't know how. Um, I don't know what the strategy was because uh, I know when WrestleMania two uh, happened, um, the first thing that happens between uh, Velvet McIntyre and the Fabulous Mula is Mula's grabbing her by the hair and just whipping her through the air, and Velvet coming down and wh- whipping her again. You know, and I'm, that's gonna hurt the head. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah, it did, and Mula was not gentle. I don't doubt it. No, no I'll, it wasn't if you were going to have a bruise or a welt when you walked out of the ring with Mula, it was how many you were going to have. Yeah. Yeah, she she worked tight, real tight. Yeah. I can remember one day, one one night I was wrestling against her, and she chopped me. Mm-hmm. And I walked in, when I got back to the dressing room, you, you could see a perfect imprint of all five of her fingers on my chest. Okay. 
she she worked tight, real tight. Yeah. Well, another story I heard too, and again, I don't know how much truth of it is because I've tried to see this for myself. I heard originally Velvet was supposed to win that match at WrestleMania too, uh, but Moolah ended up covering her on when uh, when um, McIntyre hit the press uh, slam uh, off the top or top ro- rope after the reverse. But apparently, I heard that uh, Velvet's uh, ringlet strap broke, and I guess uh, Moolah covered her to keep her from you know falling yeah, out. I wouldn't doubt that. That would have been one of the good things Moolah did. Yeah, I'd say that would be one of those. Yep. I remember one match. I did not know when I met Velvet that she had dentures. Okay. She had she had been in a wreck as a child. Mm-hmm. And she hit the windshield. Okay. And so she had dentures. And there was one day we were in Eugene, and I threw her into the rope, and I chopped her, and I. And, oh, God, she would get ice. Her feet, I've got the picture. Her feet are even with the top rope. Oh. And her head is out in the middle of the air. And I asked her, you know, once I saw the newspaper article, I said, no, why, why is your hand up here? She says, because my damn teeth came out. <laughs> I had to catch them and put them back in. <laughs> Would that be one of the, the worst mishap that's ever happened in one of your matches? Besides, you know, well, we mentioned, of course, the, the your neck injury, but but funny. I'm talking about funny things. You know, the denture stories is actually kind of funny, but things that happen that that's, just kind nobody of nobody even knew. I didn't even know <laughs> until Velvet told me. <laughs> that was back in the day when, you know, you didn't sit in the dressing room two or three hours and go over every single move you were going to make in the ring. Mm-hmm. You knew the start, which was a lockup, maybe an arm drag, you know. Maybe yeah. you go to lockup and somebody gives you a knee to the stomach or whatever. You knew the high spot or the comeback, and you knew who was going over. Okay. That was all you knew. Everything else just went naturally. You know, you, you you had to be a gymnast. You had to be a, a wrestler. You had to be a street fighter. You had to be a choreographer and a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. Because your match didn't go according to every move you discussed in the dressing room. I mean, if we talked about that for 15 minutes, that was a long time. Yeah. You went according to what the fans wanted. You had to look at them. How mad are they getting when Velvet's, you know, hiding a chokehold or or Judy's pulling my hair behind her back? Is that working? Mm -hmm. No, that's not working. So let's do something else. And you kept playing around until you figured out what those fans were in the mood for that night. Yeah. No, well, well, whatever heat... uh will work exactly and not spitting on somebody's flag no no that's true i i never people have told me too you know that it's a work it's a work but i don't know uh-uh. What. Uh-uh. that's not a work yeah that uh uh what's the word i'm looking for that's disgusting well the people it's in montreal disgusting. were didn't react well well if you've got to do that get eat you need to be a baby face yeah. What did you think about, and I heard Jim Cornette talk about this, the curtain call. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Apparently, um, the, the click, as uh, it was then, during the Attitude Era, there was Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Scott Hall, uh, Kevin Nash, and uh, I think Shawn Waltman might have been in there as well. And I guess there was a match between... Uh, uh, Sean, I think it was Shawn Michaels and Diesel, if I'm not mistaken, Kevin Nash. I don't quote me on that, but apparently, or, or there was a tag match, one or the other. At the end of it, they all get in there and group hugged because uh, Hall and Nash were going to be jumping ship to uh, another uh, 
uh, I think WCW or whatever it was they went to. Uh-huh. And basically, you know, just gave away the fact that, I mean, I think people knew that that wrestling was uh, not not real, real, like in terms of people hating each other, but they were able to buy into it. And Jim said yeah. this right here was just disgusting watching the baby faces and uh, and heels just hug at the end of the in in the middle of the ring. Well, I think I, I think they may have been going off the something that I asked somebody one day. Mm-hmm. You know, boxers can get in the ring, beat the snot out of each other. Yeah. And at the end, they shake hands. Yeah. And maybe that's what they were trying to go with. But in my day, if you were a babyface and you were caught out in public with your opponent, do not pass go, do not collect $200, get out of my territory. Yeah. You know, uh, that's one thing. That's one thing. Uh, Vinny did that when he testified for Congress. Yeah. And, it was, and that was made public. Mm-hmm. He totally broke k Um But, you know, there are some real matches. Yeah. You know, and any move that I've ever pulled in the ring, I can make it work on you. Exactly. You know, all this crap about, you know, 16... Plexes, uh, yeah, and all this. You know, we're not Superman. Yeah. You know, and, and and they've taken they've taken away once again, they've taken away the common man's dream. Yep. And I, I I say common with respect. I don't mean common as, you know, a put down. I'm mm-hmm. talking about the everyday man. Yeah. And woman. And mm-hmm. child, and they've taken away from family too. These matches that you see where these girls are hanging out all over the place, and they're using the f word and cussing, you can't take your grandma to that match. Nope. Back in my day, you could look on the front row and you'd see it from the littlest kid to the oldest adult in the family. Well, Bruno San Martino brought up in an interview that he was disgusted seeing Steve Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin, guzzling beer and flipping the bird off into the crowd. And he's like, there's kids in that audience, you know, and and they're looking at him like he's some kind of hero. And he also cited the Kiss My Ass Club that Vince had going on there, which, again, ridiculous. That was disgusting. I, I actually saw one of those. Yeah. One of those where they had Vince, they rubbed Vinny and some guy's in. Yep. That has no that that has no place in wrestling. Nope. That's like, and I was talking about it earlier about the schoolgirl thing that uh, May and Moolah did, mm-hmm. where the finish was they sat on the girl's face, and she passed out because it sank so bad. Oh gee, I didn't see that. that. No place in wrestling. Oh, I saw it. Oh gee. May and Moolah came out in red and black checkered. Um, short skirts and the white white uh, shirt, like a schoolgirl, old Catholic schoolgirl outfit, mm-hmm. and that was the finish. Oh. And if anything finished me watching the WWE for good, is when I saw that. It's disgusting. Yeah, people want old school wrestling. They don't want all this cussing. They don't want. You know, people flipping people off. Oh, there's a one that um, I've seen, and, and Jim Cornette, again, I love hearing him voice his disgust on this. Uh, there's a guy, apparently, I kept forget who the guy is. I don't know whether it's Joey, Joey Ryan, I don't remember, who flips people, flipping people with his dick. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it was yeah. heartbreaking to see uh, Mick Foley, of all people, a nice guy, uh, actually fall into this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, sometimes you do what you got to do to continue making money. And yeah. when Vinny caught up all the territories and, and put the territories to an end, mm-hmm. to either work, it, it was like in the old days of working for Moolah when you were a woman. 
Yep. You either worked for Moolah or you didn't work. Well, Vinny got it to where you either worked for Vinny or you didn't work. Well, there's a few. Yeah. ROA and some of these independent people Mm -hmm. that are starting to put on old school matches and they're drawing. I mean, ROA sold out Madison Square Gardens in 20 minutes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. They sold it out. And this is this is right after Vinny had get, given up the lease on Madison Square Garden. ROH took it over and in 20 minutes sold it out. That's got to tell you what fans want. Well, apparently, uh, Ron Smackdown, I guess uh, the numbers are going way, way, way down. Well, and if you watch Facebook and you watch the fans, mm-hmm. uh, the pay-per-views are going down. Yeah. Because people will watch it for, like you said, you watched it for five minutes, and you went to your computer and watched some old school wrestling. Yep. And And I can't stand the fact there's a lot of people today, younger folks, who will not watch old wrestling because they're so brainwashed into today's crap. Now, see that once again, that's like with Lucas Dakota up here with Oregon Wrestling Club. Mm Mm-hmm. The first hour of his training session, he's got his computer up. Yeah. He's got old school wrestling on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched, I, I went up to his first show, and the and even on the night that we're going to wrestle, he had his boys in that ring that morning training. Yeah. And he was showing them... This is the way it's done. Mm-hmm. And you never saw... The, the only match that I saw, and I, I'm not going to name the people that were in it. Okay. It was the third match that night. And people were starting to get up and walk out. And this was one of the big guys he paid to come in. Oh, and wow. And it was a new guy. It was one of those bump, 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 bump. Yeah. You know, it's like they didn't know how to grab a, 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 an arm bar. No. Or a headlock. People want the old school. They're over it. Well, I had an interesting uh, debate argument today with somebody. I know I, I know somebody who's right into wrestling. And uh-huh. uh, I told her, I said, uh, I'm interviewing uh, Princess Victoria today. I said, um, and uh, I said, I'm, I'm honored to have her on. I say she is so 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 much uh, better th- and more entertaining than what I'm seeing today and her response was that she don't know who you are but she doubts that very much and we got into a big debate like she got offended because I trashed uh, uh, Becky Lynch um, Becky Lynch right now the champion and uh, I wouldn't have a problem with Becky Lynch but I guess because of the whole Me Too movement and I've got nothing against women getting higher positions. I'm all yeah. for it. But Becky Lynch coming out as, quote-unquote, the man. I'm sorry. Could you imagine Adrian Adonis as the adorable Adrian Adonis or Gold Dust coming out as the woman? Nope. And she, she got offended that I trashed uh, Becky Lynch. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I said Becky Lynch has nothing on Princess Victoria or Velvet McIntyre or Wendy Richter. I'm sorry, I'm going to stand by that. You're, you're, not come, you're not talking about that she came out as a man. No, that, that the gimmick man, was. Talking, yeah. You know, that's something, uh, that's something that old school people are going to have to understand. Yep. This is the era of LGBTQ. Yep. People who used to get tied up to fences and killed are part of our community. Yeah. And there's going to be transgender people in wrestling because there's transgender people in this world. Actually, uh, Becky Lynch is not transgender. She's a female wrestler, and I, I they just uh-huh. they that's just what they're calling her, the man, as in. Um, uh, she's elevated beyond the men's wrestling. Oh, okay. See, once again, I don't watch that stuff. Yeah. It's not <laughs> transgender. And I think Becky Lynch is a decent wrestler, but I grew disgusted because of that, because if you switched it and did it the other way around. 
Right. Yeah. Then then uh, people would get offended. Like, well, I mean, yeah. We've got eight I mean, my God, go all the way back to Gorgeous George. Mm hmm. But I can kind of sort of see your point. Yep. Um, but then again, it's kind of hard to see your point. Because, like I said, I, I'm coming out as the man, I take, I take great, great honor in when one of the boys calls me and says, you're just one of the boys. Oh, I think that's great, but I don't think that's what's happening here. Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> then I can't speak on it because I don't watch it. Yeah, I really, honestly, do not watch WWE. And like I said, my son was fifteen before I told him I was a professional wrestler. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I don't like. I mean, go back to what Vinny did with his own wife. Oh yeah. I can't remember the name of the manager, but he showed up at Vinny's house, mm -hmm. and the ending of the interview, he's walking Linda up the stairs and says, now you're going to pay for what your husband did. Really? He disrespected his own wife. Yep. I didn't see that segment. <laughs> I saw it by accident. Yeah. Um, but... I'm, I'm not sure how they're doing this, the man thing. Um, I, I mean, think it... Ha wrestling the guys? No, no, no. Um, I think after the whole Me Too movement happened and where yeah. women started to uh, rise up, and I have no problem with that, you know? Right. I work for a woman, so I have no problem with that. But well, I, um, <laughs> I th like she would have on her, on her ring attire, it would say, the man. And I think it was, uh, I'm trying to word this right, but I don't think, she, I, I, I took it as kind of a mockery to men using the whole Me Too movement to kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's like they're saying it's okay to spit back on males. No, it's not. Now, no. if that's what she's doing, no, I do not agree with it. Yeah. So, when you're talking equality, equality goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Here's another story. Need women in business with respect and women on the alternative need to treat men with respect. Yeah. And if, if it's disrespecting the men in the business, then no, I don't agree with it. Here's another interesting story I have for you. Um, and this this happened, uh, I, I understand that, I, I only saw the video of this, but apparently it happened uh, I don't know whether it was Black History Month or whatever it was, but uh, I guess when Daniel Bryan was uh, had a retirement after an injury, a lot of wrestlers were celebrating him, and they were walking away from the ring. And there was uh, Titus O'Neil. He's uh, an African American wrestler, very big guy, and I guess he's very heavy into charities and stuff. Apparently, a very nice guy, and. Uh -huh. This was caught right at the very end, and I don't think it was supposed to be, but uh, Vince was kind of leading the way out, and he kind of placefully uh, touched Vince's arm as if to say, ladies first, because he was walking in front of Stephanie. Vince yeah. turns and shoves him. And even Batista was saying, you know, he, he should have just left wrestling right there. He got suspended. Wow. I think he should have punched Vince out. Well... Like I said, I, I didn't know. I never really associated with Vinny. Yeah. Um, and I could have probably foresaw what he was going to do to women's wrestling when he, got, when he took over the business. Mm -hmm. Because as many times as I wrestled in New York, yeah. probably the last year and a half in the business, I was in New York probably 50% of the time during the year, mm -hmm. Vinny never came into our dressing room. No. Now, Mr. McMahon, Vinny McMahon, Vincent McMahon Sr., yep. he always came into our dressing room, asked us if there was anything we needed, mm -hmm. did we have a problem with the way the match was supposed to go, but Vinny never did that. No. 
What was it like oh. wrestling in Madison Square Garden? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. In fact, it's the match where Velvet and I got the belt. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> did you see where we kind of did a... I grabbed Velvet, my, her elbow, and we kind of did a do si go <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying to her at that time? No, what are you saying? Look at all these damn people. <laughs> I've never wrestled in front of a crowd half that size before. Yep. And I'll tell you what, you want to talk about wanting to throw up. <laughs> Was that your biggest arena? Actually, I think our biggest arena was the Superdome with Bill Watts. Okay. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty. It was a, I think that was a forty thousand uh, person crowd that night. Oh wow! That's when Vince Senior still had the business. Did you ever have situations? I hear stories like this with Piper, uh, Terry Funk, Ric Flair where uh, f fans have tried to attack. Have you ever had situations oh, like that? <laughs> oh, God, yes. Yeah. Um, when we were out of country, mm -hmm. I was the bad guy. Oh, I never knew you were the heel. Oh, look at my look at my Japan match. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, yeah, and I love it, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of people like being the heels, yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, I mean, did. And when I, finally, when I finally got my chance, I went over. Uh, we flew into uh, Santo Domingo. Okay. And Wendy. Well, Wendy's blonde-haired, green-eyed. And like in most countries like Japan, uh, Puerto Rico, blonde hair and green eyes is, you know, over like a million dollars. Yep. So Wendy was the good guy. Well, we got there, and as we were flying in on the plane that day, their vice president had died. Okay. Well, this guy's having me do a radio interview, mm -hmm. and he asked me, and now I understand I'm the bad guy. Okay, yep. And he asked me, well, what do you think of our country? I said, you mean this dirty little country with these dirty little people mm -hmm. who have been begging me to come here for three years, and just because some guy dies, you postpone my matches? Mm -hmm. I had no clue that they worshipped this guy like we used to worship JFK. Yeah, and at least you didn't have to spit on a flag or stick a flag up your nose like Shawn Michaels, you know? Well, I, I didn't know to say to like this guy this much, or I'd have never said it, because they okay. tried to kill me. Okay. We sold out every arena in Santo Domingo for the next three weeks. Okay. There was one night I got in the ring, and everybody in the freaking crowd had an orange to throw at me. <laughs> when I went to and from the ring, I had six bodyguards. <laughs> and they were still reaching through these bodyguards, pinching me. Okay. Uh, they caught one girl just she was about to cut off one of my pigtails. Oh, I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, you know, uh, the second night that they had the oranges, they went from, and let me tell you what, an orange hurts when it hits. I don't doubt it. And I happened to catch one, and when I caught it, I, I, you know, it was like in slow motion. I knew exactly who threw it. Mm -hmm. And I caught it, and I hit him right in the head with it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, um, who was it? Uh, who was it that got Ann Casey. Okay. Ann Casey got stabbed and shot. Yeah. Um, Beverly Shade can tell you some stories. If Cora Combs was still alive, she could tell you some stories. Mm. Um, there was one night Wendy and I were wrestling, and I threw her out of the ring, and she's laying there like she's out. And this guy with cowboy boots stomped her in her private parts. Oh. That's people You're taking it way too, yeah. You're a fan. Mm. You're not a wrestler. 
Yep. You got no right to put your hands on the bad guy or the good guy. Mm hmm. My job is to whoop the bad guy. Yep. It's not your job. And I went off on the guy. They 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 arrested him. Mm hmm. I heard a story where the junkyard dog was involved in an angle where he was supposedly blind. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, I forget who, what tag tag team was in the ring, but he was at ringside. And I guess somebody jumped out. I don't know whether they had a knife or a gun. I, Jim Cornette told the story. And, of course, the uh-huh. junkyard dog could not give away that he can actually see. He said he was lucky right. security just grabbed the guy. That doesn't surprise me. I think Hyper was stabbed. Yeah. Um, I know Harley's been stabbed. Terry Funk has. Um, just about every heel wrestler that you know of from back in my day, mm-hmm. they had the heat so bad people didn't want to kill them. Yeah. You know, but that was back in the day when you had real heat. What did you think of Ric Flair as a heel? <laughs> Ricky baby <laughs> I loved his nosed flops like he he knew how to get heat <laughs> and he was so entertaining yeah. you know I was telling you about we were all sitting around the table uh, yeah trying to help pipe uh, Ariel's name yeah well we're in the middle of this conversation and like I said we were sitting by the pool at the Hilton mm-hmm and we look over, and Rick's floating on his back in the in the pool. <laughs> and Piper, being Piper, looks over, and he starts doing the theme from Jaws. <laughs> all you could see was Rick's nose above the water. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Rick was a nice guy. Rick's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's got his demon. Um, but he's he's a nice guy. I never, yeah. You know, he was always good. To me. Yeah, yeah. And and he got tremendous heat. Yes, he did. Especially with that blasted strut. I'm going to tell you. A lot of times, you can get a match over before you get to the ring. Like, watching Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair cut promos on each other, they had the match before they ever hit the ring. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Look at Piper's interviews. Yep. And none of that was scripted. Oh, yeah. That was all... That was a free-for-all. Mm-hmm. You know... you never knew what was going to come out of Piper's mouth. Nope. <laughs> uh, we all were sitting in the dressing room one day in, in uh, at Chicago Sports Arena in Portland. Mm-hmm. And Piper was up in the crow's nest cutting an uh, interview. It was when he had turned babyface and him and Buddy Rose had the big feud. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you what, Buddy had to run for his wife a few times from the fans. Okay. Um, I never saw a better heel to babyface turn in my life than when Roddy turned. And he's up in the crow's nest, and he's talking about Buddy Rose, and the the uh, intelligence came in play uh, to how intelligent Buddy Rose was. Mm-hmm. And Piper looked right straight in the camera. He says, "Let me tell you what, brother. I got enough room in my belly button for Buddy Rose's brain, a, the heart of a promoter, and a cockroach egg." <laughs> Now, we're all sitting in the dressing room, and the whole dressing room went dead silent. (laughs) And here comes Piper, and he's sitting down. We all knew he was fired. Yeah. A lot of people don't know, but Don Owens was a small man. Yeah. And you could tell by the way he walked into the dressing room as to whether he liked your match. Mm-hmm. And he comes stomping in that dressing room. He goes over. He stands right in front of Piper. He said, let me tell you what. He says, that's the best damn interview I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> that was when we all breathed again. <laughs> well, 
I love the story behind, like, the original Starcade uh, when uh, Roddy Piper and Craig the Hammer Valentine were going to have that dog collar match. And I guess Piper was asked to come up with the match, not realizing it was going to be for him and Valentine. <laughs> And the look on his face when he realized it was for him and Valentine. <laughs> yeah, I guess they had rashes on their neck for a long time after that. I'm sure they did. <laughs> you get all sweaty and then you've got leather rubbing on it. Yeah. Yeah, Piper, Piper and Valentine. In fact, I think I was around when that happened, wasn't I? You could have been. You. You were done in 1984, and I'm going to tell you, 1984, a lot was happening. I mean, you oh, had the yeah. you had Hulk Hogan took the belt off of the Iron Sheik that year. Yep. You had uh, Tito Santana and Greg the Hammer Valentine in a vicious feud over the Intercontinental title. Right. You had uh, Wendy Richter um, dethroning Mula for the belt. Yep. That happened, and, uh, and of course, rock and wrestling was just getting started. In 1984, yep. I mean, there was a lot going on that year. And, oh, yeah, uh, because I, I, we were on planes. We spent the crew in New York, and I was lucky enough to be part of it in 84. Mm -hmm. We spent more dang times on planes than we did sleep. Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt it. I mean, uh, we'd, fly, we'd fly into Montreal. Mm-hmm. Uh, wrestle Montreal that night, then you had to fly to Vegas, and you'd read... Rest, uh, you know, wrestle in Vegas that night. Then you'd go to Louisiana or, or someplace like that. Then you were in Houston, Texas. I mean, it was nothing to get on a regular uh, regular airline flight mm -hmm. and see Roddy Piper, Don Morocco, Austin Sika Samoa, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy Snuka, Greg Valentine. And, I mean, this was a normal, everyday thing. <laughs> Kamala was around at that time, too, in Mid-South, was he not? Oh, I, you know, that's one gentleman I've never met. Um, I know he's in bad health right now. Yeah, i got to reach out to him because I always liked him, but he also doesn't care much for Vince McMahon, and neither does Outback Jack, apparently. <laughs> You're not going to find a lot of the old-school professional wrestlers who like Vince McMahon at all. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, mm -hmm. like, look at what they did to Piper just before he died. Yep. They he, cut off his money because well, he said something bad about Triple H. Well, yeah, I spoke to Colton Ariel about that. Something had to do about um, uh, Steve Austin. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Piper had... Um, I can't remember the comedian's name. I know he was in uh, the Three Stooges movie. And he was in and he was uh, um, impersonating Steve Austin. And even, Hacks, yeah, and even Hacks saw Jim Duggan fell for it. But Duggan, you know, Duggan was a pretty a really good guy and thought it was funny. But Piper yeah, did it out of Duggan. love. Steve Austin apparently th threw a shit fit. Right. At least that's how I'm, I'm, I'm understanding it. Now, Steve Austin tells one story. Uh, Billy Jack Haynes, on the other hand, tells another story that he, Steve Austin did not answer that challenge. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, he better not. I'll see, I'll, I'll see Billy Jack here next month, probably when I go to uh, Oregon Club Wrestling in Portland. Well, Billy Jack uh, challenged uh, Steve Austin to a fight. <laughs> yeah, and if Steve did not answer that. Up, he? Huh? I said Steve didn't stand up either, did he? Nope. And I kind of lost some respect for Steve Austin on this because uh, I think this could have been settled with just a, a conversation back and forth. Right. And Piper addressed it and he wasn't happy. He, podcast. Yep. You don't take his money away because... He was playing a rib on somebody. Yep. You know, I mean, and that was what, the week before Piper died of a heart attack? Something like that, yep. I saw there's an interview. Piper is at an uh, independent wrestling arena. I can't remember who it was, but it's, it's on YouTube. Okay. And it's, it's Piper's last televised uh, 
interview. He got up in the. He, he didn't wrestle. He got up in the ring and he thanked the fans and everything. Mm hmm. And what he had to say about, and he called him Vinny too. Yep. He didn't call him Vincent or Mr. McMahon. He called him Vinny. Mm hmm. And he basically told Vinny he could shove it where the sun doesn't shine. Good. Good. He had his say. But well, what? Well, it's, know, this is. Piper gave his whole life to the WWE, and they did him like that. Yep, but yet Shawn Michaels can uh, basically uh, not job for anybody and play a basic asshole. The only reason, I get, uh, apparently, that he lost to Steve Austin at WrestleMania 14 is because The Undertaker taped his fist up and said if uh, he screwed The Undertaker or screwed Austin the way he screwed Bret Hart, he'd be waiting for him. But Shawn Michaels was a real prick, apparently, at that time. I don't know what he's like now. Apparently, he's born again or whatnot, but... But uh, Vince let him do whatever the frig he wanted. Let Triple H expose the business, and uh, let, <sighs> well, you know what? Yeah, they got to live with it. Mm-hmm. They got to live with it. But the rest of us can promote old school wrestling. Oh, I definitely promote old that, school that, wrestling. That's the, that's the best way that we can get our revenge. Mm-hmm. Is go on and yeah. go on well. Yeah, I mean, the you know, fans had to rally behind getting uh, Daniel Bryan uh, a championship shot. Right. Yeah, I they, mean. The fans have got to start realizing they hold all the cards. Yep. You know, this thing, this WWE lawsuit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a man, I think his name is John Dollar or George Dollar. He's a late night talk show host. Okay. He showed a graph. He started out with your average everyday people mm -hmm. that died for 61. Yep. And that's right at the bottom of the chart. Mm -hmm. Then he showed the graph of NFL football players who died before 61. And that's, a, that's, that's about an inch or so, you know, about 20% above your normal average everyday person. Yep. Then he showed professional wrestlers. And now... We're a lot smaller group than the NFL. Yep. And he showed professional wrestlers who had died before the age of 61. Mm-hmm. And it was 50% or more above NFL players. Yep. And he was calling. See, when, when the guys went to sue the NFL, yep. the NFL went straight to the bargaining table. Mm-hmm. I said, all right, let's let's work something out. Let's figure out something that's good for both of us. Vinny won't even walk to the bargaining table. No, you know, but he's, he's still showing. He's still on old school on his old school wrestling thing. He's still showing videos of me, Velvet, mm. yep. Roddy Piper. Where's our royal? Yeah, Kamala even was saying that about uh, an action figure, you know, like a guy interviewing him saying, "Do you get get any royalties for this?" And he said, "No." No, and that's like that's like the contract that Vinny has people sign, where they can't work for the opposition for five years after they work for him, or ten years after they work for him. Mm -hmm. They can't hold him responsible if they die or they get injured in the ring. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. McMahon, but didn't you testify before Congress that you'd never seen a career or life-altering, you know, uh, injury in the ring? Why do you have to have that clause if that's true? Yeah. You know, um, he, he's, he's I, I can't say on, on public radio what this man is. Well, even yeah, I mean, too, I, I mean, I you don't have to get into detail about this, but we've heard the stories about the 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 Ring Boy scandal and and Pat Patterson and this and that and uh, and yep. yeah. Uh, watch the old Maury Povich show, where I believe it's uh, 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 Armstrong, Barry Orton, and Bruno and called in. Bruno. Yeah. And they're talking about they caught Pat Patterson in the in the backseat of a car with a ten year old boy. 
Yeah. And that was on national television. Yeah, I saw the interview. Yeah. I don't have. I don't. As, as I said earlier, you know, LGBTQ. I'm. I'm pro support. Sure. I don't have a problem with you being gay. I don't mm-hmm. have a problem with you being lesbian, transgender. You know, you do what does you. Yeah. But when you're a pedophile. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you, looking at Vince's expression when he was being countered by Bruno and uh, and Barry Orton. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Vince's counter was, uh, how do you know this? Blah, 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 blah. Well, it's all over the Internet said by various wrestlers, not just Bruno and, had, and Barry. huh? You know, and he didn't sue anybody for slander. Nope. Now, if somebody said that about you, how quick would you be on the phone to your lawyer? Well, you know what? It wouldn't be long. <laughs> I wouldn't think, breathe, or blink. I would have had the phone in my hand. Yep. Um, there's a lot of crap like that that goes on. Mm-hmm. And there's an interview with Piper. Piper did a private interview about Pat Patterson. Yep. And when he broke into the business. Mm-hmm. And what Pat Patterson did to him. Yeah. You know, the man should have been out of business a long time ago. But uh, they celebrated him. They did. I didn't. I didn't either. Um, you know... I mean, I understand he was the first Intercontinental Champion. I get it, you know, but... Uh-huh. <laughs> But why is he still working for Vinny? Well, he's passed away now, so... When did Pat Patterson... No, he was just at CAC last year. Pat Patterson? Yes. I thought he had passed. No. No, in fact, I made it, my, I made it a point to walk up and let him know I was there. And he made a smart-ass comment about, I don't do girls, I do boys. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's listed as still, I guess he's 78 years old. Yep. Okay, I was wrong. He was at CFC in 2018. Yep. Wow. Yeah, but the it, WWE had their own table. Like, I mean, I, I don't know the guy. I can't speak on it. But, like, I'm just going by what's all over the Internet and what's been spoken by a lot of other wrestlers, you know? He hasn't sued any of them. What does that tell you? That pretty much about tells you a lot. You know, I've never witnessed anything myself, but I was in the business. And I know what I've been told by people who have never lied to me. Yeah. No, that was... Uh, <laughs> when yeah. you're, you know, birds of a feather. Yeah. You, know, you you sleep with dogs, you wake up with fleas. Vinny sleeps with a lot of dogs. Yeah. Speaking okay. of which, the night the night you wrestled Mula, were you nervous about, at all about wrestling Mula, Mula? Oh boy, it wasn't so much about wrestling, or it was how many bruises I was going to carry out of the ring. Okay. <laughs> I hear about wrestlers wrestling stiff. I know Valentine likes to wrestle stiff. He and Ron Garvin would chop at each other, and they loved it. But sometimes it can be a little harsh. Yeah, well, yeah, but Ronnie and uh, and Greg, that's kind of a personal thing between them. They like to play. Mm Mm-hmm. Mula just wanted to hurt you. That's not fun. I mean... If you see most people give a chop, their hand's cupped, right? Mm-hmm. When Mula gave you a chop, her hand was wide, flat open. Yeah. I mean, when she chopped you, she chopped you. And there wasn't no reason for it. Yeah. Uh, and, but then we can turn around and go to the story where I'm standing in the gym at, in, in the barn at Mula. And she brought in this girl, and this girl was stretching everybody else. I mean, she was hurting the other girl. Okay. And she, had, she hadn't even been trained yet. I was standing there, and I was watching her, and she rubbed this girl's face in the mat, and the girl come up, and she already had uh, mat burns on her face. Oh. 
And Mulu looked at me. Now, th- if this is my school and my ring, and somebody's up there hurting my girls, I'm going to take care of the situation myself. Yeah. She wouldn't get in the ring with her. Did anybody... Me, says, Can you take her? Yeah. I said, yeah. I said, how do you want me to take her? Street? Wrestling? What? I don't care how you take her. Just make her stop hurting my girls. Well, I went up there, and she, I, this girl didn't know me, and she didn't know that Sandy Barr had tra- trained me in shoot wrestling, and collegiate and Greco- Roman wrestling. Mm-hmm. So she wanted to do a, 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 a sit-out, and I hooked her head under my elbow, and I took a run and jump, and I run her face halfway across the ring. <laughs> On the mat. And you when will... she come up, she didn't have a mat burn. She had blood. Yeah. And that was the end of that. Then Mula sent me with this crazy woman to Japan. Mm-hmm. So she couldn't send her with anybody else. <laughs> Did anybody ever fire back at Mula when she tried to hurt them? Yeah, Sue Tech Spring. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that. Okay, I'm sorry. That left my mind. That was a good story. Is- the rest of us couldn't do it because she was the manager. Okay. She was the booker. Okay. And if you didn't work for Moolah at that time, you didn't work. Sandy Barr and Don Owens, Al Tomko and Eugene Owens, or not Eugene, uh, Elton Owens, bless their hearts, they kept Velvet and I working for over a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but one day Sandy come to us, he says, I don't want to do this. But I've got no choice. I can't book you anymore. The only way you're going to get booked is if you go to Moolah's. Well, I stopped off to see a friend of mine in Charlotte, and he begged me. I mean, literally begged me. He said, Vicky, don't go to Moolah's. <laughs> he said, stay here. You know, find a job. Get on, you know, get on your feet, whatever, but do not go to Moolah's. But I wanted to rest. Yeah. So I went to Moose. Hmm. It was it was it's well known in business how Moolah did her girls. Yep. Yep. You know, uh, like said, huh? everybody's entitled to their opinion. Mm-hmm. There are some people Moolah treated very very well, but there's a lot of us that she really treated very very poorly. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen Moolah in the ring with George the Animal Steel at his height. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with that green Me tongue. Too. <laughs> I would have rather seen her in the ring with Kamala and his blasted forks. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what? Uh, we've gone. Oh, you're my longest interview. You know that? Well, they say I don't know when to shut up. Well, Bruce Glover uh, missed... Uh, three hours by three minutes and you've gone over three hours and I'm not done because I wanted to ask you if you had any charities or a web page you would like to plug on here uh, I know you like working with animals pit bull okay there you, go. you hit it right on the head mm-hmm. um, any pit, any organization that is going against BSL which is breed specific legislation um, I have two pit bulls. Okay. And I've had several. The 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 media attention that pit bull gets is not is not true. Okay. Yes, you have some bad dogs, but that's because they were raised by bad owners. Yeah. These dogs are one of the most loving and I've had German Shepherds, I've had Saint Bernard's. I've had your little ankle biters. Mm-hmm. My dog, I have some health issues. Yeah. And there are sometimes I don't get out of bed. Sometimes two and three days at a time because I can't. Those dogs will not leave my side. Oh, nice. They sit there and they will cuddle up against me and they will stay in that bed. And the only time that they will go out is when they absolutely cannot hold it any longer. 
Um, and I found this to be overall, just about every pit bull I've ever met, they've got their own personality. You know, a hundred years ago, pit bulls were actually nannies for rich people's children. Because a pit bull, once they consider you one of their packs, they will die for you. Mm -hmm. And they would put the, them with their children so that if somebody tried to kidnap their children, these dogs were there to protect the children. Yeah. And the pit bull has gotten a really bad name. And if, if you've got an, a local organization anywhere, USA, Canada, the world, go help them out. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that you did some work at some animal shelters. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I was in uh, Franklin, Virginia, or actually Cortland, Virginia, and they had a 500-square-mile uh, 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 county, and they had hunt clubs, which each hunt club has anywhere between 10 and 40 dogs. Okay. This uh, shelter only had seven runs. So every time the eighth dog come in, it got put down. Oh. Uh -huh. And I started I started a web page, and it's called the Friends of Southampton County. Okay. It's on Facebook. I'm no longer on the page. I'm not in Virginia. I turned it over to other people. Okay. But when I started the page and started putting pictures of these dogs up, that shelter had a 96% kill rate. Wow. For the first time last year, they had a 0% kill rate. Fantastic. And, and people are buying, you know, you've got these breeders out there breeding dogs, and I'm not putting y'all down, y'all, but we've got 10,000 dogs a day being euthanized mm -hmm. because nobody's got any room for them. Yeah. So help your local shelters, help your local people who are trying to rescue dogs, your local rescues. They need your help. Yes. Yeah, I knew you were passionate about animals, and uh, that's uh, I, I've had a lot of guests come on here who are passionate about animals. You got a web page, like a wrestling web page, or I know you got your Facebook page for you and Velvet. Yeah, we've got uh, on Facebook, it's uh, Velvet McIntyre and Princess Victoria fan page. Mm -hmm. um, I will post pictures here and there, uh, pictures that haven't been seen. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll post matches. Mm -hmm. uh, you can private message me and uh, Velvet on, on there. Uh, we might not get back to you that day, but eventually we will get back to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all, I promote local wrestling people up here. Okay. Uh, independent wrestling on that page as well. Okay. Well, here's my last question for you. Oh, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, what do you consider your greatest match? Greatest <laughs> There's a silencer, huh? <laughs> You're thinking. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's hard to single out one because I worked with so many great women. But I'd have to say it was my first match with Velvet. Okay, yes. And Sandy was so confident in our wrestling abilities. Our first match was a televised match. Oh, wow. And I went to jump over the rope. Because that's what Sandy wanted me to do. Mm hmm Now, this is on television. Okay. Now, and add to it, it's the first match. By the time I got out to that ring, I was sweating bullets head to toe. I go to jump over the, over the top rope and my hand slips. Well, it slipped just right to where I was balancing lengthwise from the turnbuckle to the middle of the rope. And somehow I made it look like that's what was supposed to happen. Okay. And if you watch Lanny Poffo, mm -hmm. that's how he goes in the ring. Okay. But that was the longest 10 minutes in three years I've ever spent. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but we had a great match. Okay. Do you have a worse match, the one that you're not too fond of? Yeah, the one on the ring, I was with, uh, oh, what was her name, Betty, 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 Betty. I can't remember her last name. Okay. Um. Anyway, the ring was horrible. Okay. You would walk across it and feel like you were walking across the wooden bridge. Okay. And Betty decided it was okay to body slam me on the thing. Ooh. Well, when she did, they hadn't tied the cross ropes down on the ring right. Mm-hmm. And one of those two-by-eights came up and hit me in the back of the head. Oh. And knocked me out. I still have a permanent bump from that on the back of my head. Yeah. Well, you know... I remember you quite fondly looking at all of these matches, and like I said, it's been fun the last few days. Just and I'm doing this at my brother's apartment. I go visit him on the weekend, my brother Andrew, and we. Uh, I said, "This is who I'm interviewing," and we just sat there and watched uh, matches with you and Velvet, and tag matches, and you just in singles matches, and uh, you know, it's just fun watching uh, you two bolt across the ring and some of the stuff you guys did. You guys uh, were very innovative, and and uh, in a way that uh, where today it's all flashy and uh, whatever the production values are today, you guys did it without all that, and you made it look awesome. Thank you. That that was our job. Yes, that's what we were supposed to do. We didn't. I I worry about the girls these days because with what they're showing. You know, I worry about stalkers a lot, where the girls are concerned these days. Yeah. And I understand that they do what they do because it's what they got to do to make a dollar in wrestling. Mm-hmm. But I worry about them. Yeah. Well, I like guys like John Cena, you know, but I also... Uh, huh? John Cena is a great human being. I've heard that he's a really nice guy. I have always liked him, you know? Mm. Yep, when he picks the big show and Edge up over his shoulders, that that to me can counter Hulk Hogan body slamming under the giant. <laughs> you got that straight, and yep. and and top of everything he does, kids. Yes, yeah. I mean, every time and and the commercial that he's got, mm-hmm. where he's promoting America. Yep, and he says LGBT, white, black, Hispanic. Mm-hmm. You know he's promoting. No matter what the man does, he's promoting togetherness. Yes. And well, understanding. And I, I, I really respect John Cena. I love John Cena. A lot of people harp on him, but you know what? I like him, you know? I don't see Triple H picking a big show up over his shoulder, so... <laughs> right, and I don't see Triple H going to visit a dying kid in the hospital either. Nope. No, not, not, just, not that I know of, anyway. <laughs> Right. But, right. Uh, but yeah, and, of course, the pipe bomb, CM Punk, some people just throwing it out there. There are people out there that are just challenging the business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are, and it's a good thing. I think you it's know, a fantastic I, thing. Well, I, like I said, and I'll, pro, I'll promote ROH till the day I die. Yes. Because they, they, ROH and Oregon Wrestling Club, mm -hmm. they're what old school wrestling is all about. I meant to ask you, what did you think of Trish Stratus, speaking of a uh, female wrestler that's really got popular and is really good in the ring? Did you ever uh, observe her? No, I have not. I've heard, I've heard good things, but I, I, I can't speak on it because I haven't seen it myself. Yeah, she's one uh, of Canada's pride and joys. Well, mm -hmm. more power to her then. Yep. But if, she, if she's promoting the good side of wrestling, I'm all for it. Yeah, she she and Lita were always great. Yeah, yep. I, I've heard I've heard good things about both of them. Yes. Um, and Beth 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 Phoenix is another one I like too. She was about uh, about like China, 
but uh-huh. she she didn't seem to have the muscle mass. But she and China are the uh, one a uh, couple of three women that's been in the Royal Rumble, <laughs> and, right. and uh, Beth Beth Phoenix can give it. <laughs> if she can give it as well as take it, obviously. Yep, yep. And th- these are people I recommend you check out for. Uh, more recent, they're not really in the ring now because I, I think uh, injuries and stuff like that have taken their toll. They make appearances yeah. here and there, yeah, as it is. But we are celebrating, of course, Princess Victoria. We want a wrestling action figure for Princess Victoria, Wendy Richter, and Velvet McIntyre. Come on, toy companies. <laughs> yeah, Judy Martin, Leilani Kai, as well as as uh, blonde. Uh, what were they called? I'm sorry, I forgot it. The Bomb Angels? The bo- uh, No, not the Bomb Angels. Judy Martin. Glamour Girls. Glamour Girls. Le- 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 Leilani Kai and Judy Martin. The Glamour Girls. <laughs> yes. Yep. We want to see them all. We want to see the figurines. I want to see those rubber ones come back. Those those were great. You couldn't break them. <laughs> oh, somebody gave me one of uh, Roddy Piper. Yeah. Uh, with a fan, he sent it to me. Mm-hmm. You, you couldn't burn that thing. <laughs> I take it you tried to burn the Hulk Hogan one. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> or the Vince McMahon one. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> I, did not dr- I did not drive nails for the Vince McMahon one's head. I did not do that. You did not do that. <laughs> no, I did not do that. I did not take a blowtorch to it. I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Princess Victoria, I love you very much. I'm so happy that you come on here. And you know what? I'm, you've been so entertaining. Um, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, well, I thank Velvet McIntyre because I discovered you through her. And, you know, it's nice that, you know, through the Internet, I can see all these older old matches and see all these uh uh, grapplers, because a lot of people, young people today, they're they're just bought into whatever they're they're just drinking whatever Kool Aid served to them, and they they pass off the older generation of wrestling. But to me, there's a lot of great stuff, and and uh, you and Velvet are just electrifying. I've said that before. I'll say it again. You you two brought it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the compliment, and I'll take it to heart. Yes. Um, some of these kids out there, some of these kids out there, you need to watch that old school wrestling. Yeah, really do. Absolutely. I was going to say before I let you go, uh, would you mind doing a plug for my show? All right, you ready? I'm ready. Go for it. Hi, this is Princess Victoria. Uh, you need to listen to the dead dog. It's DR. Jerry G. You know what? Um, when uh, Roddy Piper's daughter Ariel did a plug for my show, it took her several tries. And I'm going to tell you, both times I had her on, I just got a kick out of her. I even kept her mistakes in because she was so entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> With her daddy being Roddy Piper, do you expect any less? No, I don't. No, I don't. Give her another shot. Greg Gilbert and Tyson. Python's Paradise. Python Paradise. Greg Gilbert. Greg Gilbert, Python Paradise. Out of New Brunswick, Canada. Out of New Brunswick, Canada. Yeah. One, two, three. Go for it. Hi, folks. Princess Victoria. You need to listen to Greg Gilbert on uh, Python Paradise out of New Brunswick, Canada. Yes. I'm hoping you all have a great day. Absolutely. And you know what? We do have a wrestling show here at the station. You want me to pass you along to them? Sure. Yeah, we got one that does strictly uh, wrestling here. And uh, do you want me to give them your number, or do you just uh, want, how do you want them to get in touch with you? Uh, well, I don't pick up the phone if I don't recognize the number. Okay. So give them my number, but have them contact me on Facebook first. I'll do and that. Let, and let me know that they're going to call me. Sure, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll let them know and and uh, see how that goes. They've had Jeff Jarrett on the show. They had Mean Gene before he passed away on the show. and uh, Yeah. That was a nice guy. Yeah. Mean, mean Gene. Yeah. Man didn't have a mean bone in his body. 
Nope. I've heard great things about him. But yeah, I, 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 I'm, I've, done, I've done over three hours with you, you know, and, uh, and uh, you're my longest interview, and I am honored to say so. Well, thank you, sir. And like I said, they always say I don't know when to stop. <laughs> you know what? I think it's fantastic. This has been fascinating. Well, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity of uh, doing the interview with you. I do appreciate that. Well, you know what? I want to keep your memory alive and keep uh, all the old school wrestling alive as well. Man, that's, my, that's my lot in life now. That's what I'm trying to do is promote old school wrestling. Promote the old school wrestling. And you and Velvet were true champions, not just in the ring, but outside the ring as well. Thank you, sir. Yes. God bless you, and you have yourself a wonderful day. I sure will. We'll talk to you later. All right. You take care. All right. Bye-bye.